to college football here on ABC. Some of you will be in the Big 12 to watch Missouri face Colorado for the Big 12 North lead. Others in the Pac-10, important matchup between Cal and Oregon as they're playing for bowl position in the Pac-10. Then in the Big Ten, huge matchup. Wisconsin facing Penn State. Both control their own destiny for the Big Ten BCS berth. Or the ACC where Florida State can clinch a trip to the inaugural ACC championship game with a win over NC State. Check local listings for which of these games will be seen in your area. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. You got Joe Paterno coaching today, Bobby Bowden coaching today. 709 career victories between the two of them. And they're getting it done with freshmen. And they're about 300-something years old each, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? These freshmen who are coming in and having such a huge impact, particularly on Penn State and Florida State this year, is not surprising. These young men have been in school. They've been around the system and the environment. They're working out, and they're getting used to being a college student. But as a parent, I don't like it. I think the college football needs to change it. They need to stop really? this. I don't like the fact that you've got kids enrolling in January of their senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. Grow up. Stay at home. Let mom and dad know nurture you and then go in the summer and become a football player. I think what we're going to see if those players do go early and they do leave early, we're also going to see some problems on the back end. I think the sooner players start playing, the sooner they're going to leave. And that means that a lot of kids out there aren't going to be getting their college educations and that could be a problem as well, John. Yeah. Plus, as mom and dad, I just want them home. You Stay know, home, for, for that one, one more semester. All right, you're out on the West Coast living in San Diego. What do you see in the West Coast games? Well, I tell you what, we got some pretty interesting ones. Missouri, Colorado is a very interesting game because the winner of this, as we know, is the control of the Big 12 North. For Missouri to do that, they have have to have a big day out of not only Brad Smith but his supporting cast. The coaches felt that they didn't incorporate the running backs and tight ends last week enough in that loss to Kansas, so look for them to do that today. And then Oregon Cal. That's a very interesting. It's going to be very interesting, guys, to see how Dennis Dixon comes in off the bench. He's a very athletic quarterback. See how he fills in for Clemens today. If they do that, Oregon may have a shot. You know what? Mike Bellotti, he's got Terrence Whitehead. They've got to get Oregon needs to get a running game going. Whitehead's a guy who has been productive, but he's not getting it done right now. So I like Oregon in this football game. Cal, I still had not figured out too much with Yeah, both of them looking ahead, of course, to you know who on the mm -hmm. schedule as well. We will see you at halftime. Enjoy the game. Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado, and here come the Buffaloes and Ralphie. On a perfect November day in Boulder, ABC Sports brings you the number 22 team in the country against the Tigers of Missouri. As you take a look at what's going on around the Big 12 today, Texas just keeps rolling along. They're throttling Baylor right now. Nebraska's losing to Kansas. Kansas State within a touchdown of Iowa State. The other game is later on tonight. Those two games have a huge bearing on the implications for what game we have today because the Big 12 North standings look like this. Colorado, a one-game lead on Missouri. If Missouri can win today, they would move ahead of Colorado due to the tiebreaker. Colorado wins. It's a two-game edge over everybody else in the North, and they would punch their ticket to Houston in the Big 12 championship game. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, along with Bob Greasy. This is a Colorado team partner that's 6-2, and two, but you look at the two losses, two top six teams in the country, mm -hmm. both on the road. Mm -hmm. And we asked Gary Barnett yesterday, what's better about this team than last year? He said they're more mature, and that starts with their quarterback. He's more mature. Well, he is. Joel Klatt, he's very experienced. 31 starts this game will make for him. The thing I like about Joel, he is smart. He is like a coach on the field, and he is a playmaker. He's the guy that distributes the ball to the other guys. They've got a bunch of big playmakers, including maybe the best two tight ends in the conference. You talk about playmakers. Missouri coming off a disappointing loss last week to Kansas. But we're finding out today that Kansas is pretty good because they're beating Nebraska. But that was a disappointment to them. They've had an up and down season. When they're up, it's because of Brad Smith. When they're down, it's because of Brad Smith. Well, that's what happens when your quarterback can run as well as he can throw. And Brad Smith will set the record uh, for the quarterbacks rushing in this, uh, this uh, probably in this ball game but he has to play well and the thing that he has to do is he has to throw the ball well because every team that he plays is going to start and stop the running game try to force him to throw and he has to throw well here on the road for them to win today well they won last year at home can they do it two times in a row and stay in the big 
12 North Hunt. We're about ready to find out. The Tigers ready to take the field. And we're almost set for action in Boulder. The race to the Big 12 championship game is in full gear. Colorado's charged to the top of the North, and the Buffs have no plans to relinquish the division title that they won a year ago. Missouri, though, they've got other ideas. The Tigers led by one of the most dynamic players in the country. We've talked about Brad Smith. Will he be enough to overcome the Buffs, or will Colorado be able to tame the Tigers? Swanee on the field, and the kickoff is next. two great things come together, that's the sweet spot. The race-inspired Nismo Frontier from Nissan. You guys have to try it. Friday nights with my best friends. We have one rule. Everyone orders something different. Now at Olive Garden, new smoked mozzarella chicken, sautéed and topped with melted mozzarella and a sauce of four Italian cheeses at Olive Garden. Our network is out of control. It's all these servers. I need more people. I think we should buy more servers. But that's the problem. Too many servers. The servers are our friends. They want to serve us. <laughs> He's lost it. What do we do? We're switching over to IBM servers. It's easier to manage. We can control everything from here now. Stop! You're making them angry! No! Take back control with the IBM eServer X series featuring reliable Intel Xeon processors. 1855, Fred Miller brews his best beer yet. It has everything except a name. Then it hits him. Fred Miller's beer. Good call, Fred. Pick up some 1855 lager, our tribute to Fred's first beer. Okay, I want to invest. I even know how I want to invest. But there's a teeny little problem. Either I pay some broker a ton of money to tell me a bunch of things I already know, or I go bargain basement, I get some website, a 1-800 number, and uh, a good luck wish. I mean, what would you do? Back in Boulder, let's check in with the third member of our team, Lynn Swan. Swanee. Thank you, Brad. The two most potent offensive weapons in this game share one thing in common. They both wear number 16. You've heard about Brad Smith from Missouri. Let me introduce you to Mason Crosby, the kicker from Colorado. And he is a real weapon. Yes, they believe he can win the Heisman Trophy. You should see him in pre-game warm-up. The defense is scared, but the 15 crosses the 50-yard line. Mason Crosby is good for three points. Watch what he does here in pregame warm-up. This kick is from 67 yards out. He nails it right through the upright. He has won two games for this team in the last second, and he will cause all kinds of fits when it comes to field position. So he is a true weapon for Colorado, Brad. Boy, watching him at practice the other day, the three of us were amazed. Even the sound of the ball coming off his foot is amazing. Missouri won the toss and deferred. Colorado will get their hands on it first on a 49-degree day. There is considerable amount of wind going left to right, basically, as we face the field. Beautiful blue skies here in Boulder. Gary Pinkle, his fifth year as a head coach at Missouri, a game under the 500 mark right now, and 100 wins in his career. And Gary Barnett on the other side. For Colorado, he was Big 12 Coach of the Year last season, his seventh year here. 48 and 35, 5 and 1 all time career wise against his alma mater. He was a football player for Mizzou back in the day. Crowds geared up. Big 12 North may be decided right here this afternoon. Missouri to kick. Stefan Robinson and Bernard Jackson are back deep. And a great kick, and this one's way out of the back of the end zone. So Colorado will work from the 20-yard line. That means Joel Klatt, the guy we talked about, the senior captain. About 20 minutes down the road, his hometown. There's the numbers, 18 and 12, career as a starter. 13 touchdowns, only four interceptions. Colorado does not turn it over much. They'll bring out their offense at the 20-yard line. 
That's a little bit older than most quarterbacks. He's 23 years old. Right out of high school, he played minor league baseball for a couple of years. Fakes it to Ellis, comes out near side, completes it, and run out of bounds at the 28-yard line, Evan Judge. As we take a look at our Crestor starting lineups, here's how they look up front for Colorado. O'Neill and Harrison, Fenton, an exceptional center. Daniels and Gary Moore across the front wall. Charles and Ellis will share the tailback spot. Sipnuski and Kloffenstein, a couple of tight ends that are both excellent. Sprague and Judge, the wide receivers. You've already seen Evan Judge catch the first pass of the ball game. As a duo, I would say these two tight ends are about the best in the conference. Second down and short. The give off the left side, and boy, that hole closed in a hurry. Lorenzo Williams made the stop on Byron Ellis and prevented him from picking up a first down. It'll bring up third and short as we look at the front four for Missouri. Shulock, Smith, Williams, and Brian Smith, who's a career sack leader now for Mizzou. The linebackers are Bacon, Harrington, and Derek Ming. And in the secondary, Kincaid, Simpson, Overstreet, and King. A lot of experience back there in the secondary for Missouri. Shulak and Smith, those two guys come off the corners. And they create a lot of havoc. Third down and a yard. Colorado two tight end set. Met head on is Vickers, and he didn't get it. Yeah, it's a big play. First uh, third down situation. That Colorado's going to have to give it up. Derek Ming makes the tackle. The captain, one of them on defense. The outside linebacker out of Webster Groves, Missouri. So it's three and out for Colorado. And Colorado's got an excellent putter as well. John Torp in to kick. And look at that, third in the country, 46.4, which is right where he was all of last year. He'll be kicking into the wind. And that's Marcus Woods waiting on the other end. adjustments made on the defensive front. They're trying to put some pressure on Torp. He doesn't have a good kick at all. The roll goes inside the 40-yard line, but he missed that one compared to a normal shot for him. It's well, only a 34-yard kick. Obviously, kicking into the wind really affected him. So good field position for Brad Smith and the Tigers. And there's Brad. If it seems like he's been around for a long time, it's because he has. He started every game. This is his 45th career start. There's the numbers, and the rushing leads the Big 12, as Bob told you in the open. He's been there five years, a red shirt year, and then, as you mentioned, started every game for the last four seasons. Graduated in May, grad student out of Youngstown, Ohio, the captain of the offense in the no-huddle offense, comes up firing on first down, and he's got it complete. Out to the 45-yard line to Sean Coffey, one of his favorite wide receivers. Our press door starting lineups on this side look like this. Llewellyn and Palmer, Speaker, Cook, and Klingler across the front wall. Marcus Woods, the tailback, Rucker, Coffey, Franklin, and Ekwur Ekwu are the wide receivers. No huddle again, but they'll take their time. As you can see, Smith already set up once. Lifted his knee, looked back over to the lineup, now changes the play and backs into the shotgun again. We'll talk more about that as we go. Three wide outs to his left on the option. That wasn't much of an option. Looked like his tailback didn't want any part of it. I don't think the tailback got the call. Lakamanapuno made the stop, part of the front wall, along with Wright, Gary, and Lucas. Lucas, a freshman, getting his start. Dizon Washington and Ebu are the linebackers. They're all a little bit banged up. Thaddeus leads the group there in tackle. Sims, Billingsley, Henderson, and Burrell, the secondary for Colorado. They're a little bit small on the corners, and you might watch yeah. Missouri's big receivers take advantage of that or try. A couple of receivers are 6'4 and 6'5. Smith comes up firing, completes it across midfield to the 48-yard line. That's a first down to Martin Rucker, one of his tight ends. Let's take a look at the game plan, Bob. Well, for Missouri, they got to come out, and they've got to throw to win, and they've done that. They've thrown a couple of times on first down. They picked up a third down. Defensively for Colorado, you've got to contain Brad Smith. Don't let him beat you with his feet, and that's what the teams that have been successful against Brad Smith have done. First down now in Colorado territory at the 47-yard line. Following that short point, they didn't have to go far to already cross midfield. 
what you've seen him done do is he's looked to the sideline and gotten the play from the coaches. End around coming. I want him out of here. Get him out. Nice block, and now the end around pass was expected, but Colorado stays there and makes the play. Well, the coverage was there downfield. Nobody to throw it to. That was very good coverage all around by the Buffs. Loss of 10. Dizon stayed home, made the tackle. This play is just going to develop very nicely. You see the, the, the safety down the middle. There is nobody there. There's nobody open, I should say. There's a lot of people there, but their coverage was there. So a big loss, and now back in their own territory at the 42-yard line. We're at second down and 20. Rucker, the tight end in motion. Give it off to Woods. He got popped in the hole and bounces out to about the 44-yard line. Let's get a Tour Championship update. Here's John. Well, Brad, just as football came on the air and golf went off, this is your leader, Bart Bryant, who knocks this one in out of the sand to birdie 18 and go to 14 under par. Three-stroke lead over Latif Goosen. Tiger Woods is four back. Brad. So that'll be quite a leaderboard coming into tomorrow's action in Atlanta. Here it's for the leaderboard, the Big 12 North, and the pass is complete down to the 43-yard line. William Franklin on the receiving end from Brad Smith. Dies on again, in on the stop. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That was a third and 19. They picked up 13, and they'll have to give it up. The teams that have slowed down Brad Smith have, have played a very conservative, uh, just very, uh, how it, not a blitzing, not an aggressive defense, but a, but a passive defense just to slow him up. Line situation, Stefan Robinson's a return man. He's dangerous at times. Nice kick way up in the air. That one almost brought rain. And it's going to get a great roll out of bounds at the six-yard line. Great punt. Joel Klatt and the Buffalo's offense will go to work again. Their second possession. We'll see how they do when we come back. People have been waiting for this game for a long time. In fact, the fans are already out in force. The marching band is here as well. Coming up on the campus. comes to bad cholesterol, has your doctor told you lower is better? Because of recent medical information, your doctor may recommend an even lower cholesterol goal than before. Going down. So you've changed your diet. You exercise. But what if you still need a cholesterol medicine? Well, one that can lower bad cholesterol up to 52% is Crestor. Yes, Crestor, along with diet, can lower that cholesterol up to 52%. Is Crestor right for you? That's between you and your doctor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you're taking or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of serious side effects. Is your cholesterol really where it needs to be? Ask your doctor about Crestor. So across its punt puts Colorado deep in its own territory to start their second drive. The first one was three and out. And now the tailback is going to be in the end zone to start this one. Vickers the lone setback as Clapp sets him up at the six yard line. He'll throw from the end zone. Deep down the middle has got his man. Judge across the 40. All the way out the ball came out. Covered. 
Jackson. Say it was by down. Colorado. Yeah. They're whistling it dead at the 43-yard line. Back judge came in very quickly and signaled that he was down. This is an excellent throw by Clatt. To spread the defense. It's going to come to our right side. They're going to spread the defense. Good, pr good protection for that deep in your end zone. Great throw and great distribution. Oh, I don't know. That yeah. ball might have been coming out. Look close. Very close. At the 44-yard line, if they snap it, it's all academic. And they do. And the quick slant. Nice catch at midfield. Dusty Sprague. The other wide receiver coming from the other way. Let's check the game plan for these guys, Bob. Well, offensively, you got to get the ball to your playmakers, and that's the tight ends. Kaufenstein, you've already seen that. Def and defensively, you got to clamp on clamp. You know, pressure the quarterback. Don't let him sit back there and throw. And those two things just came through on that last touch, uh, that long, long pass. They got the ball to their big play tight ends, and they didn't pressure the quarterback. Second down and three. First down run. Lawrence Vickers. Vickers, Mr. Versatility. He can run it. He can catch it. And he'll be a lot of the single setbacks today because Ellis and Charles have both been dinged up with bad ankles. And so this guy becomes the main running threat. Out of the 42-yard line. So Colorado's got something working. There's Lawrence numbers on the ground this year, including five touchdowns. And he's also caught 19 balls. Spins in the hole inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. David Overstreet made the stop defensively. Overstreet, junior out of Dallas, Texas, and if the name rings a bell, it should. His daddy was a good one at Oklahoma. Played with the Dolphins in the NFL for a time. And did. Second down and six coming up at the 37 yard line. Three wide outs this time, actually with a tight end out as a wide receiver. Here comes the blitz on Clatt. Joel throws it's got a man wide open. It's Judge for the third time today. And the second time in this drive, a big play to judge all the way to the 10 yard line, a 26 yard pass play that time. Very similar to the pass that he hit to the uh, Kloppenstein. Two receivers are split to his left and they both go straight down the field. Zone coverage and he just finds the area and Clapp just drops it in there. It's right at the 10. So it's going to be first and goal. Evan Judge having a big day already. Caught six balls for 108 yards and a touchdown last week in their three-point win over Kansas State. He's got three for 73 already. On first down, play action. Platt rolls, fires, got his man at the goal line. The ball loose? The ball is loose and Missouri's got it. Marcus Bacon came up with it. It was within a yard of being a touchdown, and then Missouri got there defensively, and they've got the ball. This is uh, this is uh, Sipnuski, I believe, number 45. Yes, he's going to. He just makes an effort to get in the end zone. Let's take a look. No, oh, no, that, that's not a fumble. He is on the ground before the ball comes out. At about the one yard line. Here's another angle for you. His whole body's down, isn't it? Before oh, yeah. the ball Everything squirts is out down. of there. Everything is down. His, uh, his knee, his butt, his back, his <laughs> elbow, everything. Yeah, they are reviewing this. There's his, his hip is down right there. He's already on his butt, as Bob said, yeah. and the ball, he's trying to get it to the goal line. He's at about the one yard line with his body, and he's six seven, so he's got a long stretch with that arm. And the ball came out, and the call on the field was a fumble and a Missouri recovery at the four yard line. But now they're talking things over. John Bible's on the headset there, talking upstairs to Dave Ames. And we'll know in a minute with a play under review whether Colorado's going to get another crack at the end zone. We assume that it is going to be 
Colorado ball at about just, the one. But you know, uh, Sipniewski was trying to make a play, but but you've got to use you you got to use good common sense right. too. I mean, it was going to be a first down inside the one. If you can't get in, you be careful that, that you know. Thank goodness we've got the instant replay that may straighten this thing out. It should straighten it out. But, but it's not perfect. Exactly. Yep. Again, that seems to be really the best angle that his whole body is down before the ball is ever stripped out of there. But again, this is taking a little while, so maybe we're jumping the gun. After review, the runner was on the ground before he fumbled the ball. Second and goal. Yeah. And Colorado. It works the way it's supposed to work. So we've showed it to you enough, and uh, the folks upstairs up here agree with us. This is the first year that uh, the Big 12 is using the, the uh, instant replay. And now it's second down and goal for the Buffaloes at Missouri's one yard line. In the red zone, fourth in the Big 12. Vickers, the tailback in the eye, gets the call. Vickers puts his head down, and he's in. Touchdown, Colorado. Well, boy, that was a drive that started at their own six-yard line, and it didn't take them long to get in Missouri's end zone, courtesy of some big pass plays by Clatt. And Vickers on the ground scores for Colorado. Good-looking drive. It was a good-looking drive, and mainly because it was into the wind, and they had a couple of nice pass completions down the field. Some big plays by Clatt to get him down there. 94-yard march. Crosby into the point after, and it's up and good. So it only took a little over three minutes for Colorado to take it the length of the field. Vickers does the honors. Buffs in front by a touchdown. Sixty-five horsepower Nissan Maxima. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. So that's two state fanatic pizzas. Domino's new Steak Fanatic Pizza and Monday Night Football. The perfect call. Seven nothing Colorado. Our Nissan scoring drive is the longest one for the Buffaloes this year. 94 yards in seven plays. A little over three minutes. The quarterback was perfect on the drive. It was 4-4, 81 uh, yards. And uh, like I said, he hit a couple those I like the, the, the throws that he was making to the receiver straight up the field. There's some holes in those zones that he found them. With the wind, the ball blew off the team. We're going to have somebody hold now. Jared Burrell is going to hold for Mason Crosby. Jared, watch out. Keep your finger in place because that kid will kick it off. Normally, <laughs> he'll kick it right through the end zone. That's right. And he did anyway. So Missouri will work from the 20 yard line. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Singular, raising the bar. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And Nissan, who invite you to shift the way you move through the world. Pretty day in Colorado. 
Boy, a lot of people out yesterday. It was even a little bit warmer than today, but the sunshine, everybody on bicycles, everybody hiking, everybody healthy, with the exception of a few of us in the booth. First down at the 20. And again, Smith comes up to the line, changes things, and awaits the snap on the option. We'll keep it. And so far, Colorado has done, Bob, a little bit what you alluded to earlier. The teams that have beaten them have had the defense just kind of stay in their lane and wait for Smith to come to him. Well, two weeks ago, Nebraska was an aggressive defense, and he burned them for like 450 yards of total offense. Yep. Last week, Kansas just kind of sat there and did nothing defensively, didn't get out of their lanes, kept vision on the quarterback, and they, and they, and they got beat. Smith in trouble here. Scrambles his way out of it and finds a receiver. Very short game. It's going to be to his tight end, Chase Kaufman, the freshman. So Brad brought himself a little bit of time on that one, but it's still a two-yard loss, actually, with a completion. Bob and Brad, just want to throw this little point in as the game progresses. We see how the wind's blowing on the flags. When they're calling all those plays from the sideline, and then he has to let the linemen know, it's a little more difficult to hear because in those helmets, the wind whistles through the air hole. Yeah. <laughs> Third and long. Four receiver grouping, including the tight end, Kaufman, who's out in a slot there on the right side. Here's a throw, and it's complete. It's a first down. Up to the 34 yard line to Sean Coffey. And that's Sean's second catch of the day. Pick up a 13 on third and nine and a good throw. Well, Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, said, we're not going to sit back all the time. We got to blitz some. That time they did have a blitz, got in his face, and he just made a nice throw. Brad just got it out there, picked up an important first down. They need to stay on the field. First down at the 34. Best run of the day for Tony Temple. On the ground, he gets eight. We'll bring up second down and short. Tyrone Henderson made the stop. Missouri offense uh, is 17th in the nation in rushing and 22nd in the nation in total offense. They average 215 yards on the ground every game. Both quarterbacks are five for five throwing. They're going to try the same play to Temple. This time it didn't work as well. He got a yard. Maurice Lucas came around to make the stop. Lucas, they like this kid. 6'4", 240, a freshman from right here in town. Had thoughts about maybe going to Kansas State and then changed his mind and said, you know what? Home looks pretty good. Here yeah. he is starting as That's a freshman. Right. And, he's, and they need him, too, because two defensive ends in front of him are hurt and out today. Ladon and Barrett are both injured and out for this ball game. Third down and a yard. Coming in, Missouri, 45% on their third down conversions. Smith takes his time. Naked bootlegs back the other way. You're going to have to hustle. Well, he hustled enough, didn't he? <laughs> Got a first down. Abraham Wright looked like he had him in his sights. And Brad said, I'm a little bit faster than you are. Wright did a nice job of catching up to him, but uh, he just didn't, he read, didn't have enough room. Take a look at this from the end zone. He's just going to go to the sideline. He's looking to throw the ball and then circle back. This was a planned play. Wright just doesn't have enough and just enough to get the first down. And with that run, he becomes the NCAA's all-time leading rusher for a quarterback. He just passed Antoine Randall. Pretty impressive numbers. The throw is complete. Martin Rucker, the tight end, made the catch. Only about a two-yard pickup. Let's check in on the Badgers and the Nittany Lions. Here's John in New York. Well, Brad, it's the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT Update. Michael Robinson, you want to see a picture-perfect pass. 43 yards to Dion Butler. That's on the opening drive. 7-0, the Nittany Lions with the lead. Brad. All right, John, and when the season started, nobody expected the biggest big... Big Ten game to be that one. That, that's for sure. Here's Temple. Nice stiff arm. Temple turns on the speed, and he's got a first down run down to the 42-yard line. And Tony it's an, Temple, nice job. Yeah, it's a nice run. It's an important for some of the other players on the, the Missouri team to step up. The running backs 
the receivers. Everything can't go through Brad Smith. He's got to hand the ball off and let these guys make some nice runs and some first downs and the receivers to catch some because then they'll start loosening up and they'll forget about Smith and start covering some of these other guys. Temple gets a breather. He's the guy that had the touchdown run that iced the Nebraska win two weeks ago for Missouri. Ninth play of the drive here in Colorado territory now with the first down at the Buffs 43 yard line. Nice play fake by Smith. Being patient. And now he's got a man wide open in the middle and he got him inside the 25. Down to the 18 yard line, Martin Rucker, the tight end. And you know one thing that we've seen from the leaders at quarterback in the Big 12, Smith and Vince Young, they never seem to panic. They yeah. stand there and wait oh, yeah. until something comes open. Well, the, 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 the thing they're blessed with is the ability to buy some time. He wanted to throw this play, this ball back across the field to Woods as running back, but that was covered. So he just stayed out in the open, waited for somebody to get open, and then made the play. Seven for seven throwing the football is Brad Smith right now. We had an incompletion yet today on either side. No, we haven't. The ball hasn't been on the ground. But now there's a flag on the ground. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter. That will be our first penalty of the ball game. All right, there isn't a penalty, so we'll take that back. We talked about breaking the record of Antoine Randall L. You look at the top four. D. Dowis down the road a piece here at Air Force was so successful. Josh Cribbs and now Brad Smith all by himself and he's only 100 yards away from being the first quarterback with 8,000 yards passing and 4,000 yards rushing. And he's still got plenty of time in this season left to pick up those numbers. And I don't know how many people will ever catch that. Not many anyway. First down. At the 18 yard line for the Tigers, and they're going to call a timeout. They yeah. called timeout. Yeah. They did get the timeout, and we'll take it with them with three minutes, 34 seconds remaining. Big drive for Missouri. We'll see if they can capitalize when we come back. I don't want to just welcome my holiday guests, I want to wow them. This holiday season, give your home a few presents too. You can at the Home Depot. Right now, get no payments, no interest till January 2007 on all purchases store wide of $299 or more. Just use your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. From kitchen and bath to floors and more, you can make your home wonderful just in time for the holidays. At the Home Depot, you can do it. We can help. Lots of Wi Fi users work in coffee shops, which aren't always the best places to work. Wouldn't it be great to work wherever you wanted instead of only in hotspots? Now you can with Verizon Wireless Broadband Access. Wi-Fi only works in limited locations, while Broadband Access is the nation's largest high-speed wireless broadband network and is expanding coast to coast. Now get unlimited access at a great price, so you won't get stuck in a not-so-hot spot. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. This guy's about to find out what it's like to win a college bowl game. <laughs> Now he's about to find out what it's like to win five college bowl games all at once. Enter to win Cooper Tire's Ultimate Bowl Tour, and you and three friends could be headed to five bowl games in one week on a private jet. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And who knows, this could be you. Susan Tom took in these kids who had no other place to go. This just might be the most incredible family we're ever going to meet. This is the one you'll never forget. A two-hour Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Sunday, 7, 6 Central, only on ABC. Missouri is exceptional in the red zone. They're in it right now with a first down at the Colorado 18-yard line. At nine plays. This drive, five runs and four passes. That's just great balance. Brad Smith, offense. perfect throw in the football. He's all alone in the backfield right here. Pumps once. And the middle. Touchdown. William Franklin, a diving catch in the end zone. That's 
just great execution by the offense. And Brad Smith waiting for Franklin to clear. Eighteen yard touchdown pass. I wonder if they're going to look at this and see if he trapped the ball. Uh, they may they may review this one. They can't, can't see tell from, from that angle. No, can't see from there. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't either. I think the ball may have slipped through his hands. I thought it might have gone through his hands, but they actually cradled it in his midsection and then found the handle again. I don't know. See if we can see it from this one. Yeah, I think it went through his hands, didn't it? Is it enough, though, to overturn what was called on the field? They yeah. delayed calling a touchdown. I called it. I kind of waited, too, and decided with the celebration of Missouri, I'd go touchdown before I actually saw the linesman make the call. Called it to touchdown. It's going to stand. All right, they've got to have indisputable visual video evidence to reverse the call on the field. They felt like they didn't have that touchdown. And so we're an extra point away. We couldn't tell either from nope. looking at it from the two or three times. And the video booth gets the same replays that we show exactly. here on TV. Yeah. I'll tell you who knows for sure. William Franklin. Yeah. And I'll tell you, <laughs> I'm standing on the go on the goal line, guys. It's one of those calls where I don't think any of the officials were certain about the call. They just made a judgment went with it. Cross it in for the point after. To make it a 7-7 game. Oh, and it's not a 7-7 game. Pushed it to the left. Well, there is a lot of wind in this stadium, and it's swirling. It's going mainly left to right, but it is swirling. So that could be a big play later. As it is, Missouri gets on the board, though, cuts the lead to one. 7 6, Colorado leads. like he gets the hold down fine on this extra point. The wide receiver got it there, spun it, crossed it, I think just pushed it. Pulled it. Yeah, you, you know, field goal kicker will take advantage of the extra point guy and take, take credit for this one. I just missed it. Yep. He just pulled it. Look, looked like the alter was too close to the ball, so he had to bring his leg down in the cross it, Bob. Yeah. And pulled it right across. Yeah. Yep. Now he can kick off freely. Last time he knocked it out of the back of the end zone. This time, Terry Washington's got a beat on it for about a yard deep. Back to the 20, dives out to the 25, 26 yard kick return. And with three minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the quarter, Buffaloes take over again. Missouri's kickoff coverage is kind of different. They use, you get in a little group. Yep. And it, they didn't get out there very good. I look at the, their stats. They're like last in the conference in kickoff coverage. Maybe they should try something else. Well, maybe they have tried something <laughs> else. <and> maybe, <laughs> this, maybe this is new. <laughs> First down, Colorado. Ellis back in at the tailback spot. Platt, though, comes up throwing on first down. Completes it out to Robinson. They want to get it in this guy's hands because he can make things happen. Stefan is their punt and kick return guy, but they uh, yeah. have put some special pass plays in, the little bubble screens and those types of things to let him get out in some open space as he did there. Just for him, he's only 5'9". This is his first catch of the year. Just to just get the ball and throw it out there and make a move and see what you can get something done. Earlier this year, he had an 81-yard punt return for a touchdown, so they like his big playability. They got nine yards on the pass play to him on second and one oh, what the ground game for Colorado has been struggling so far early in this ballgame in fact they've been sort of struggling all year in that capacity 
Don't forget, great prime time on ESPN and ABC this weekend. Big game in college football is in Blacksburg tonight. Virginia Tech in Miami. Then Sunday night football, the Eagles and the Redskins have at it. Minus Terrell Owens on ESPN. And then Al and John have the Colts in New England. Can, there you can go. Uh, Peyton Manning get off the schneid in Foxborough? That's 9 o'clock Eastern Monday night. Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Here's Vickers. He's been the bright spot on the ground. Lawrence goes out for a first down across the 40 to the 41. Jason Simpson made the tackle as captain tackles captain. I like Vickers. He can do a lot of stuff. He can. He's a bigger back than these other two backs. They're kind of small. Look at the blocking up front. Harrison and Fenton. Daniels, O'Neal, and Moore just opening up a nice hole for the running backs. So Colorado moves it out to the 41 yard line. Vickers stays in there, but he's joined by Ellis in the backfield. They'll toss it to Ellis. Vickers will lead the way. They got a couple pretty good blocks, but Derek Ming, in his outside linebacker spot, makes a nice play. A couple of the running backs for the for the buffs. Let's take another look from behind the defense. Vickers is in there because of the uh, ankle injuries to the two other backs. Let's go ahead and run it. Little toss, and there you see the good the good flow. Ming number 40 gets through and makes the play. Colorado. Eight rushes, only 21 yards on the ground. See if Joel Clatt will put it in the air and second down and nine. His big tight end in motion. There's the play fake. There's the pressure and there's the throw to Kloppenstein. Almost broke that tackle. Got across the 45 to 47. <laughs> Everybody who saw the ball, nobody saw the quarterback get killed. That's right. I mean, this was a great effort for Clatt to get rid of this ball, first of all, not take a sack, but then just to complete it. 89, Kloppenstein right there. That's who he wants to get it to. Meanwhile, Bacon hammers yeah. still Platt. The linebacker is on top of him. Quarterbacks are taught when you make that play, when you turn around on that, that naked boot, look for somebody in your face and be ready to get rid of the ball, and Clatt did that. You're hoping it's not 225 pounds of bacon, which it was there. <laughs> Third down. Flags down. <laughs> So now we do have a penalty. We had one picked up earlier. Fourth snap, ball start, 45 on the offense. Five yards, third down. Sipniewski, the other tight end, the other big guy, he's hard to hide when he gets forward progress going. 6'7", yeah, 265. Talking with Gary Pinkle the other day, he was uh, saying that you know, one of their big, big part of their offense, the uh, Colorado offense, is those tight ends, Sipniewski and Kloffenstein. They've caught uh, coming into the ball game. They had 70 catches and 12 touchdowns. Quarter comes to a close. Colorado will have a big third down upcoming in quarter number two. We played one in Boulder. The Buffaloes lead the Tigers 7-6. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. singular All-America flashback, Kerry Collins. In 1994, the Penn State quarterback led the Nittany Lions to an undefeated season and their first Big Ten title. With over 2,600 yards passing and 21 touchdowns his senior season, Collins was a first-team All-America selection by the Associated Press. Text the word VOTE to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone to play All-America Trivia for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. You know how you like to be everywhere I am? Now you can be. With family talk from Singular. Add a line for just $9.99. And get exclusive phones like the Black Razor and Rocker with iTunes. Singular. Raising the bar. Introducing Taco Bell's new Nacho Crunch Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Authentic carne asada steak. Warm nacho cheese sauce and crunchy tortilla strips. Wrapped up and grilled to go anywhere. For the burrito that's fun to crunch, think outside the bun.
2006 Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year, the new Nissan Xterra. Introducing Taco Bell's new Steak or Chicken Nachos Belgrande. Grilled authentic carne asada steak or marinated all white meat chicken give Nachos Belgrande that great flavor of the grill. For great grilled taste, think outside the bun. I'm lost in you, in your splash of cherry. Your hint of vanilla makes me feel so very. I'm lost in diet cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper. Sunday, they're going to hook up and shake it up. I'm in love with you. What? And on the juiciest hour yet. Are you planning to pop the question? Wait till you see who gets to dress up. An all-new Desperate Housewives, Sunday, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Set to start the second quarter here at Folsom Field. ABC's college football, Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew on a sunshiny day. About 51 degrees about now. And a third down coming up for Colorado to open up the second quarter. They lead by a point. Both quarterbacks have been perfect today. Flat still is. His tight end's not going to get away from Marcus King, though. Nice job by Marcus coming up from his cornerback position to make the stop, and Colorado will have to punt it away. Good job by King, uh, for sure. Big Kloffenstein catches the ball, got some steam going, and he can't pick up the first down, the sure tackle by Marcus King. Our quarterbacks today, folks, if you just joined us, are 16 for 16 here through a quarter. <laughs> it's pretty good. Brad Smith has been perfect, so is Joel Klatt. Now it's John Torp to punt. He had a terrible punt into the wind in the first quarter. And the left footer got all of this one. He got too much of it. All the way to the end zone. Had a little backspin. It did it. have a little. <laughs> but once it goes in, it's in. The quarterbacks today, nice to compare when you go eight for eight and eight for eight. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's that's uh, that's a good start, especially on a windy afternoon here in Boulder. Would you like to throw into the wind, Grease, or against the? Uh, well, I, with you the know, wind? it's it's not as easy throwing with the wind as you think, because a lot of times the balls will carry too much. As long as the wind into you was consistent, I didn't mind it that much. There's the offensive production so far. Colorado with the edge. Each team with a touchdown and missed extra point. The only difference. Now Brad Smith again. Solo in the backfield in the shotgun for the Tigers. He'll be joined now, though, by Marcus Woods. And Marcus gets the handle. A lot of black jerseys around, though, and they make the stop. He's going to lose about a half yard. Brad Jones, the outside linebacker, made the hit first. He got help from his friends. This defense for Colorado is pretty good, especially against the run. They're fourth in the nation against the run, 29th in total defense. They only give up about 85 yards a game on the ground. Now watch this. Watch uh, there's Hankowitz. Watch the offense now. They no huddle. They get to the line of scrimmage and then take their time. Brad Smith is looking. Sometimes he looks over. The defense checks off. Sometimes he doesn't. Here's our first incompletion of the ball game. The intended for Ekwu. Ekwu. Near the conclusion of our game today, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Uh, third and ten now coming up for Mizzou here. Colorado trying to change up bodies. It's hard to do sometimes. Change your defense when you've Got a no huddle offense on the other side. And everybody's set. And everybody's spread out all over the place. Smith down the middle. Did he get it there? He did. And it's a first down across the 30 to the 31 to Martin Rucker. So we talked about the tight ends for Colorado being a big part of the offense. And it's been that way for Missouri here today, too, with Rucker. Well, Rucker came in with 23, 27 receptions on the year, and that was a nice throw by Brad because he just waited. You mentioned they were spread out from one sideline to the other. That also spreads out the defense. Good throw and catch. You were right, partner. He came in with 23, now four more, 27 on the season. Four for 45 for him already today. There's that inside handoff to Woods. Marcus, not the biggest guy in the world either. 5'8", about 190 pounds, trying to get lost behind that line. And he got it out to the 35-yard line. 
Take a look at the pit. It's a little snap. This is a, this is the old Utah offense. It's a brand new offense this year. It started off at uh, Bowling Green. Yep. With Urban Meyer. With Urban somebody. Meyer took it to Utah, and now they put it in this year. New terminology for these players, and that's kind of tough when you put in a whole new system. But Brad Smith picked it up really nicely. Smith, the throwback over here, wide receiver screen. Boy, the block came late, but it got there just in time, and he's got a first down, I believe. Sean Coffey. Sean turned around, looked like he was going to get tackled. By golly, his man got out there and threw the block. It was so close to being a big play. The timing, the Colorado defenders coming out there did a nice job of He gets back inside, gets the one block. Now he just needs to. That guy right there, I don't see who made the play. But right here, if he could just get up through there, he would have had it. There's a fumble in the backfield. Smith picks it up, and he's in trouble, and down he goes. Way back inside the 30-yard line. Jordan Dizon got in there. It was the bad snap that created the havoc, but then the middle linebacker got there and drops him for a big, big loss. Loss of 14 on the play. Uh, he was looking for it. Sometimes the quarterback is not looking for the ball because he's checking off. But that was uh, that was on Smith right there. Yep. Dizon was a newcomer of the year in the Big 12 Conference at that linebacker position last year. So he's only a sophomore. And he's a good one. Way back now at the 28 yard line. It's second down and 24. Going to have to hurry. Play clock winding down and timeout taken. As it was set to expire, so Missouri takes another timeout. With 11 minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first half, Colorado at home in front by point. Look at that little big bow on your top of your head. Oh, you look so fluffy. He's as cute as you want to be. Yes, you are. Yo, is that your Silverado? 345 horsepower. The new Vortec Max V8 out tows all the other guys. Wow, look at you. Good boy. Good man. Chevy Silverado, an American Revolution. So, you're a former pirate with no formal training. Now, you've got an eye patch, a hook, and a parrot on your shoulder. Arg. And all you can say is arg. Arg. <laughs> Okay, Mackler Brothers need some help with their shipping. It says they use FedEx.com, so it's really easy. I'm confident you can handle it. Arr. Terrific. Thanks to FedEx.com's online shipping center, shipping has never been easier. No. No. I like turning my credit card miles. No. 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 Okay. No. Oh, Chubsy, come on. The answer's always no. That's right. Ow. I'm not hearing it. No! 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 Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, anytime. I should have worked at Capital One! What's in your wallet? No! In all the world, there are a select few who, at their very core, are capable of incredible transformation. Under the most grueling conditions, they are shaped Hardened. Sharpened. Ready to stand among the most elite of all warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Hit me! The American Music Awards, live Tuesday, November 22nd, only on ABC. Well, you gotta bundle up a little bit today for this one. This football weather out here in Boulder. Second down and 24 for Missouri after that sack way back at the 28-yard line. See Brad Smith checking off. Five receivers for him. And he'll keep it. Quarterback draw all the way. He got a little bit of the yardage back, got to about the 34-yard line. It's always, Puna made the stop. always tougher to check off a quarter for a quarterback when you're on the road in a loud uh, environment like this. Much easier to check off when you're, when you're at home. Dizon was part of that tackle as well, and you saw him. Looked like he was holding his right wrist. He's the guy that made the sack a couple of plays ago, and he's going off the field. 
And we'll try to check out him. Third down of the mile. Smith in trouble. Scrambles out of it. He'll not get to the first down sticks at all, but he got back to the 38 yard line. And it'll be a punting situation for Missouri. Akarika Dawn made the tackle. He's the guy that came in for Dizon when he went out holding his right arm or shoulder. So Crossett will come in. Crossett, Crossett's got to kick into this win now. It, uh, Torp didn't do a very good job uh, kicking into it for Colorado. Let's take a look at Crossett. Stefan Robinson waits on the other end inside his own 20. One got a hung up in the air too, didn't it? Robinson waves everybody off, takes a great Missouri bounce though. And it's going to roll inside the 20, all the way down to the 18-yard line, 45-yard punt. So 10-24 remaining in the first half. Our Aflac trivia question this week: Missouri's Brad Smith broke the NCAA record today, most career rushing yards by a quarterback. Who among these four held his career record the longest? Tony Dorsett for rushing, Ty Detmer for passing, Harry Gilmer for rushing yards by a quarterback, or Ron Sellers for receiving yards. Wow. Huh. A multiple choice. Yeah, we haven't had a multiple choice in about four years. <laughs> I think these guys in the truck are feeling sorry for some of these uh, tough questions. I don't know if it's going to help me or not, though. <laughs> I know. Here's the throw. And it's out for a pickup of nine. Reminds me of my psych classes back in college. <laughs> Multiple co choice. <laughs> nothing. Nothing looked right. Nothing looked right. <laughs> or they all looked right. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes remaining in the half. They had a second down and short coming up. Perfect day for Joel Klatt so far. Nine for nine to six different receivers. First down run out to the 35 yard line for Byron Ellis. And a pickup of eight. Ellis battling a bad ankle. Watch the offensive line here on the left side. It's going to start one way and then cut back. Everything, look at the hole he's got right here. Nice job by the running back seeing not rushing it too quickly patience and, and then see the vision and then get where the hole is here comes a blitz off the corner throws complete again tough landing popping up as patrick williams he's all right kind of landed funny on the tackle now they're kind of excited about patrick williams number four he's a red shirt freshman they're happy he's healthy the uh, there's two starting wide receivers Sprague and Judge run good routes but they don't have a lot of speed the speed guy Mac uh, Mackey got hurt earlier in the year so they need uh, Williams in there just for get some speed in there flat still perfect tight ends got it Sipnuski down to the 38 yard line Wow, quite a day. We spent a lot of time with Joel Klatt yesterday. He is a very mature young man. We mentioned that at the top of the show today. 23 years old, former baseball player. Got married in the offseason. Sarah is his wife. I said, how you like married life? Love it, love it. <laughs> Says she works and I play football. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We also talked to uh, Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, and both of those guys are very bright. And uh, Sean said so many good things about Platt, especially like being a coach on the field. Here's a throw again complete. Basically no gain out to Patrick Williams. Swanee. Jordan dies on number 44 who came off the field. Uh, they are working on his shoulder. He has pinched a nerve or has what they refer to as a stinger. And keep in mind that last week he also had the same injury. So it's just a reoccurrence of an injury he sustained last week. Brad. All right, Swanee, thank you. Dizon had that next stinger a week ago, part of a seven tackle, one sack performance in the win, a three point win. We'll see if he's able to come back today. Williams with two catches on this drive now. Well, the running game didn't.
didn't go anywhere, did it? Yeah, it's because they were up there and uh, blitzing. They were sending nine guys, and it's tough to block. Loss of five. Here they come. Yeah, here they come. And, um, you know, if you, if you're up the line of scrimmage soon enough, and I know he didn't have time that time because the clock, the 25 second clock was running down. The quarterback would like to check out of that if you've got a running play on that you, it's not going to work. Just get the ball and throw it out to your receiver one on one. For Brian Smith, another tackle for loss. He's had a lot of those in his career. Joel Platt, pressure going deep down the sideline. There's the first incompletion, but a flag. Jason Simpson back there. And apparently we're going to have pass interference. The pass was intended for Evan Judge. Here's a call. Pass interference number six on the defense. 15 yards, first down. First penalty on Missouri. And what would have been the first incompletion instead is a first down. Take a look over here. It's just, it's just going to be an arm fight right there. But, but he is... But he is holding back his arm. Simpson number six is holding down Judge's arm, so it isn't a lot. I mean, it's not a big a, a lot to do, but there is. He is holding his arm down from catching the football. We had a great shot right there of what the side judge saw, and that flag was coming out and aimed in the direction of number six. And it's a first down, Colorado inside the Missouri 30 yard line. Sipnuski, the tight end, on the move. Platt will hand it off the other way to Vickers. Vickers got the corner, puts his head down, and pounds his way down close to another first down as we check in. What's going on in Happy Valley? Here's John in New York. Brad and his Taco Bell update, they are pretty happy in Happy Valley. Tony Hunt here, nine yards. Look at him weave his way through the Wisconsin defenders, and Penn State has a 14 to nothing lead. They just scored again to go up 20 to nothing. The extra point is pending. Penn State perhaps on their way to the Big Ten Championship. Wow. Michael Robinson moved around so many times and now in his senior season putting on a shining performance. Happy battle. Here's a pretty good performance right here. Touchdown, Colorado. Lawrence Vickers, 20 yards, breaking three tackles en route. Injured man down in the end zone. I think it's Darnell Terrell. Vickers, we said, Mr. Versatility just showed it again on that touchdown run. That's his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. I beg your pardon, it's his seventh. He's got two today. Vickers is the big back. We mentioned moving over from fullback. Watch the offensive line again up here. They're just going to block. And again, Vickers starts off to the left and cuts back to the right side. Right there. Look at all these, these Colorado offensive linemen. And now he just runs past a couple of guys. There's an arm tackle, arm tackle, broken tackle. Yeah. They got three arms on him and then never got him until they got to the goal line. Now, now Bob and Brad, it's, it's bad news when you get the guys that you had starting back there at tailback missing from the ball game. But for a guy like Vickers, let's look at the positive side of it. He hasn't been playing as much. He's got really fresh legs. He comes in there. He's got, you know, he's strong. It gives you a change of pace that the other teams can't predict because they haven't seen him carry the ball a lot. Yep. And he's doing it well today. But normally, he is the starting fullback. He just moved to the single he back just, spot. He just slid over for yeah. Charles and Ellis. Those guys banged up a little bit. Colorado now. Their touchdown drives 80 yards and 94 yards. As they help Terrell off the field, Mason Crosby comes in for the point after. Still a one possession game, even with the missed extra point by Missouri. Crosby knocks it up and in 14 to 6. So Colorado looking good at home. Looking for their seventh win of the season, leading by eight. Hey. Hey. Whew. Yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? 
Well, when I'm hurting Miss Work, Aplac gives me cash to help pay bills my health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yeah. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Nothing outperforms Gillette M3 Power Nitro. Push the button and feel the boost in performance. Gillette's battery-powered motor sends micro-pulses to the patented Power Glide blades. Get unsurpassed comfort and the world's best shave. M3 Power blows away the competition. You'll be blown away or Gillette will give you your money back, guaranteed. Try Gillette M3 Power, the world's best shave or your money back. Available features like 8-way power heated driver's seat, Bose premium sound system, and remote start with climate control. Introducing the all-new Impala. It's a whole new animal. Chevy Impala, an American revolution. I know you love this. Two quarterbacks that are almost perfect in the first half. That's not bad. You know, sometimes it, it happens that way. You go out, you start to play a game, and, and you get a groove, and everything you throw is complete. Platt's been almost perfect, and uh, Brad Smith finally had an incompletion. Both running their teams pretty well. They, they are, and I, I'm enjoying this because both quarterbacks are doing what they did best. Brad Smith is throwing the ball a lot more. I look for him to get back into some running plays uh, that he likes uh, pretty soon. What they can't get in is some of those third and long situations that they found themselves in, and that's taking possessions away from them and stop drives. We'll see if they can get another drive going here before halftime. It's an onside kick. Missouri covered it. And it didn't go far enough, I don't think, anyway. It was covered by Van Alexander for Missouri. It's almost as if he knew it was coming. Well, there is a flag there. It either didn't go far enough or, or they, they were, were offside. offside. Yeah. Offside on the kicking team. The penalty is declined. First down. So that one backfires. And Missouri's got great field position now to go to work in Colorado territory. There's Crosby, and he wanted to kick it to himself. Yeah, he tried to just kick it very short, and that was... Heads up play by Missouri. That just tells you, you know, you see something like that, Brad, you said, those guys are well coached. You know, to, to be aware in the middle of a game, an onside kick, yep. a short kick, and to be aware of it and get on it, that's good coaching. So at the 44-yard line, Gary Pinkle's team's got something working already, courtesy of a recovered onside kick. Smith in the gun. It's Chance Daniel, actually, not Smith. But he throws out complete to Sean Coffey. So it's uh, number two quarterback, Chase Daniel, the freshman out of South Lake, Texas, making an appearance here. And this is not a surprise. They're trying to get him some work because they know Brad Smith can't be around for about four more games, and that's it. Well, the other thing is Chance Daniels came in against Iowa State and brought him back to win that ball game. And, uh, you know, last week, you know, they didn't – they didn't do well offensively. They, so somebody said, well, why, why not give Chance Daniels a chance? And here's the run to the outside, and it's a first down football. Colorado scoops it. Look out. They might score down the sideline. Knocked down is J.J. Billingsley, but not before he got all the way down to the 26-yard line. 36-yard fumble return. Lorenzo Sims is the guy that made the hit on Tony Temple. Watch Temple, number 22. The ball's going to see how he, the ball's going to be away from his body, way out away from his body. You can't carry the ball out away from your body. It's got to be in close to your body so you can hang on. So now Colorado, after the unsuccessful onside kick, gets a gift of their own with a turnover. And a big fumble return down to the 26. Let's see if they go for a quick strike here. Flat play action. Joe Lowe's deep middle. Incomplete. They were going for it. Evan Judge, the intended receiver. Judge was... Clatt wanted Judge to be a little bit deeper than he was. And he had the room to get there if, if he would have had the time to get it. Perfect call. 
Try to go for the juggler after the big turnover and just that far too far out in front. Yeah, Clatt was looking for him to be a little bit deeper because he had to throw over some of the linebackers. So Joel is not perfect anymore. 12 out of 13. That's the first incompletion. There's his numbers. He'll work in the gun here on second and 10. Fakes the draw, the pitch on the end around to Stefan Robinson. Robinson, head of steam, got everybody beat to the two yard line. Whoa, he's quick. Ran into his own man. Or else that's been a touchdown. Robinson's the one they want to get the ball to. And watch how many directions the Buffaloes are going on this end around. There he is back here. Now he's inside receiver. The little option look, and he just takes the pitch inside the option receiver and just takes it around with the speed. This is why you want guys on the outside that have speed, so you can do things like this, I'll tell you. They say speed kills. Sure does. It does. First and goal. Vickers has two touchdowns already today. Can he make it three? Lawrence to the end zone. Touchdown. Vickers third touchdown of the day the captain out of Houston I think he wants to go to Houston playing a big 12 championship game the way he's playing right now Missouri was in good shape they had gotten the onside kick they had a good play going a fumble turns the whole thing around and now Colorado can make it 21 to 6 Crosby in for the point after up and perfect well, just a 26 yard drive is all it took two plays I promise I promise the all-new Chevy Impala gets an estimated 31 highway miles per gallon Malibu LS with 32 Cobalt LS 34. And Aveo with 35. I promise fuel economy is just as important to Chevy as it is to you. And now get a 2006 Chevy Cobalt LS Coupe starting just under 13.5. That's the Chevy total value promise and it starts right here. See your local Chevy deal. the engine but this is how you can set it free a manual says what a car might do now discover what it wants to do give it the edge give it syntech no leading oil provides more horsepower for maximum power great cars want more than just oil give them liquid engineering wednesday so yeah and all new lost everyone will be talking about do you see him what the hell is that one of these survivors will be lost forever Wednesday night, 8 central, only on ABC. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet and American Revolution. Aflac, to find your 2005 Aflac holiday duck, visit the website. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. Lead School of Business. That's where Swanee would spend most of his time doing business all the time. Doing business. Yep. Well, Colorado's in business now with kind of a gift touchdown there on the turnover. They lead 21 to 6. This time Crosby kicks away. This one should make it all the way to the band. Just about. And it went through the upright, so everybody signals field goal's good. <laughs> He's quite a kicker. <laughs> now we talked about getting your Aflac holiday duck, and we asked our Aflac trivia question earlier. Kind of a long one among the four records. Which one was held the longest? I'm going to say Harry Gilmer at Alabama. 
Guys, want to guess? Swanee? Somebody say something. Well, I was waiting for Bob since you went first. Hold on one second after the play. All right. Out of the shotgun. Chase Daniel still in there at quarterback. Comes up throwing. Oh, that one could have been six the other way. Very dangerous. Incomplete intended for Sean Coffey. Jared Burrow made a nice play on the ball. I'm going to go with uh, Sellers. There was some prolific passing going down at Florida State University, and uh, I'm thinking it was Sellers. Robert? I, I think I'm going with the the, the rush the rushing guy. I think I'm going with Dorsett, Dorsett. because every, all this rushing business we got going on here today, I just... All right. We'll get the answer after this play. This time, Chase Daniel offered it to his tailback again, who refused. And a pickup of about four as he keeps it. The answer is Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett in the days. Held the NCAA rushing record for a long time. And boy, was he something to watch. And then on to the Dallas Cowboys in a Hall of Fame career as well. So, Mr. Greasy is taking command of this Aflac thing this year. You know, I didn't pick Dorsett. I thought Marcus Allen was the guy that came back there and he passed him up rather quickly. Well, I don't know. I guess the guys can look it up down there, but I'm sure they already did. Daniel in trouble. Rose and got it. Nope, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver incomplete. William Franklin had a hand on it, but couldn't keep it. So the Aflac scoreboard. Oh, boy, that might be an insurmountable lead, Swanee. I don't know if we can catch him now. Well, I'm due to win one of these things, well, you? one of these years. I tell you know. what, you talk about getting an Aflac holiday duck. You get, when you get a, a <laughs> sculpture like Swanee and I both have, the statue in your office. Yeah, I've been, and I know you want one uh, of them. I've been hearing so much about it from you guys. You know, I'm getting tired of hearing it all. Mine even swivels. I don't know if Swanee swivels or not. Mine's on a swivel. It's beautiful. Mine sings. Your sings? <laughs> yes, Mine doesn't swivels sing, but and it, it swivels. Sings. That's good. Fourth down, punting or crossing. Into the wind again. Pretty good end over end kick this time, but it's going to be fielded by Robinson. Stefan got the first man to miss, and then he got planted at about the 47 yard line. A good field position and plenty of time left for Colorado. They lead 21 to 6. They've got over four minutes to work with when we come back. Select Diet Pepsi Machine? I used to fill that machine. Come on, a vending machine? I thought Coach went nuts. The kid can play. Here, Here come, come the Patriots. Pepsi Machine! 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 Machine's got hands. What hands? Live football! Drink Diet Pepsi! Nice play. What? You up for a game? Bring it on, ladies. Big 12 basketball, more than the game. Our Pacific Live game summary. Colorado got on the board first, a 94-yard march capped by Lawrence Vickers from a yard out. Missouri came right back, though. Brad Smith to William Franklin, 18-yard touchdown pass. They missed the extra point. It was 7-6. to six. Then Vickers capped an 82-yard drive with a 20-yard touchdown run. J.J. Billingsley with the fumble return, and then Lawrence with his third touchdown, that two-yard one you just saw. And that's where we are, 21 to 6. Lawrence Vickers with three rushing touchdowns. Colorado a 21 to 6 lead. All their timeouts remaining, and over four minutes to work with with good field position. They fake the end around. Platt fires to his safety valve over in the flats. It's complete to Hugh Charles, and you hear the chant of Hugh from the crowd here. It's about the first time he's been out there today. He's battling a bad ankle, and he stands up and hobbles to the sideline. 
Brad Smith hasn't been in the last two series. There's his numbers. There doesn't seem to be anything uh, wrong with Brad to just get and chase uh, Daniels in the ball game a little bit. Let him get some play in time. Very similar in styles. They can both run it well. They throw on the one run well and uh, the system that's in place will be in place for Chase next year to be the man. Vickers. Oh. I tell you what, when he puts his head down, the pile seems to go in his direction, doesn't it? When he is in the ball game, this this offense for Colorado, the running game takes a whole different different uh, look because this is a big powerful back. He's 235 pounds. Charles and Ellis are smaller backs. Uh, six foot. Well, Charles is 5'8", about five 188. Eight, yeah. yeah, so he's really a small guy. Vickers now. Lawrence has got 55 yards on nine carries, including the three touchdowns that we just showed you on our Pacific Life game summary a minute ago. Colorado has scored on three of their last four possessions. Missouri's in a danger zone right here if they give up a touchdown before halftime. Clap. The play action was great, but the rush was good as well. Now he's in the open. And he's going to get run out of bounds in front of the Missouri bench at about the 39 yard line by Jason Simpson. Hey, Bob Brad, he looked like an athlete right there. <laughs> Swanee says, you know, you get a little you get a little grief about being a non athletic quarterback. I'm thinking, wait a minute. He played pro baseball. How athletic can you get? He played basketball growing up, played all the sports growing up. His dad was a coach or a high school coach. I was impressed there because, you know, all we hear about is his intelligence and his, uh, how smart he is. But this this is a big time escape right here. Did not take a sack. Those two guys back there, and then another one comes at you. That's pretty good escape. He told Swanee, yeah, I get tired of hearing all that stuff. Here he is on first down. Quick throw, tap to the air, and complete. Guys, he also said that uh, you know, he gets a little tired of hearing it, said, but he thinks he plays better with a little chip on the shoulder. So yep. a lot of people didn't think he was necessarily going to be a really good quarterback. Uh, but he thinks it works to his advantage. But keep in mind, we talk about athletic quarterbacks. We're not just comparing him to guys, you know, who can't run. We're talking about, you know, Young. We're talking about Smith, who just set a record for running and passing a yeah. football. You know, we're talking about, you know, Marcus Vick in terms of being an athletic quarterback. He's got good skills. So is this guy, Brad Smith, warming up. Joel drops back to throw again, lofts it out. Look, wrong shoulder. Had Evan Judge out there. Judge was running toward the sideline. The pass went inside the, toward the hash mark, incomplete. And they're going to have a little conversation, I think, as they head to the sideline. That brings up fourth down. And the, and the crowd, the reaction, they know they're going to get to see Mason Crosby, a field goal kicker, try a field goal. And it's going to be snapped from the 39, so it's going to be about a, let's see. 56 yard attempt to be spotted down at the 46 yard line. He is 8 of 12 career wise from outside 50. From 56, Mason Crosby. On the way. Oh, plenty. Got The snap was not great. Nick Holtz got it down beautifully. And there's the weapon that Swanee talked about at the top of the show. That thing would have been good from 12 more yards, I think. There's no question about this one. He's kicked one from 60 in his career. And Bob, I like what he said when we talked to him. He said he tries to hit every kick the same. And he said he kicks like you swing a golf club. And he loves to play golf. Says, instead of trying to kick really hard, you just take your time, good rhythm, follow through, and that's when he kicks his best. That ball landed on the O in the word Colorado in the end zone. <laughs> and if you knew how far that is, we'll give you a shot maybe from our perspective up here. That's way out there. Well, he was kicking some, some, some long field goals before the ball game. There's the O in Colorado. Bob, do a little telestration. There's about where that ball landed. Wow, what a weapon. So it's 24 to 6. And here comes another kick. That one might go through the uprights too. Yep, it did. <laughs> oh man. 
Don't forget a lot of great football coming up on ESPN and ABC, not just the remainder of this afternoon, but tonight, big movie on ABC, Saturday movie of the week. Catch me if you can. It's Lenny, that's Lenny DiCaprio and Tom Hanks, right? Yeah. Good movie. Very good movie. Brad Smith back in at quarterback. Takes to the left and comes back that way. Complete to his tailback, Marcus Woods, pickup of about four. As we're down to 224, Colorado, or rather Missouri, has only one timeout remaining. So they've taken a couple, one in each quarter earlier. Brad, the uh, we'll talk about the, the change of quarterbacks for Missouri, putting uh, Daniels in, taking uh, Brad Smith out. I, I, I think that's fine. I, I like it. Brad had a little rest. Now he's scrambling around, finds his tight end down on the sideline. Going to be short of a first down by about a yard, I think, though. It's Chase Daniels, I mean, he can play. I mean, like we said, he won the Iowa State game up there. Yeah, that and was when Brad Smith was a little dinged up, kind of a mild concussion. And exactly. Chase came in and took him down and got him 10 points, got him in overtime, won the game. There he is looking on. Sometimes when you get to the when you're out there competing and then you get to the sideline and you you don't go out the other your other quarterback goes out you can see things that you don't see from the field. Here's Smith on the run and he's got a first down. Again, Brad became the all-time career rushing leader for a quarterback earlier in the ball game, passing Antoine Randall L. Antoine now a star receiver with Swanee's old club, the Pittsburgh Steelers. How odd is that that Antoine Randall L played quarterback in Indiana, Heinz Ward played quarterback at Georgia, yeah. both little guys, and they're the two big receivers for Pittsburgh. And weren't they fun to watch when they were in college? You got that right. So is this guy. Throws on the run, complete. Threw a strike out there. Looks like it's going to be good enough for the first down again to Chase Kaufman. Coming up, Capital One halftime show. John and Craig and Aaron will have all the highlights and analysis from all of this afternoon's big games. Plus, uh, the guys, the game day crew, Lee and Kirk and Chris, will have a preview of tonight's big game between number six Miami and number three Virginia Tech. It's all coming up on the Capital One halftime show. Smith again, same spot, and this one's incomplete. All right, we're talking about Randall L. and the receivers played college. For, what do you think about Brad Smith? I like Brad Smith a lot. Always have. I, I don't know. I don't know where he's going to play in the pros. He's going to play somewhere. Yep. I don't know which position he's going to play, but if he can't play quarterback, he definitely can play do the things that Randall L. Is a academic all-conference selection has been every year. Graduated in May. Already, and this in his senior season now has really been something special to watch all the way through. That's just a right out on the hands. Wonderful, wonderful throw. Beautiful. Umpire steps in and whistles the play stops. Colorado. Colorado's going to take a timeout. With 57 seconds remaining. Here's the lineup I talked about in uh, football coming up tonight. Miami and Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. That'll be huge with ACC and BCS implications on ESPN at 745 tonight. Terrell Owens out of the Philadelphia Eagles lineup and off the team indefinitely. Terrell Owens is out? Yeah, they suspended him. I don't know what took him so long. I don't either. They've given T.O. a T.O. He I'll can sit out for a while. I'll tell you that's, what. That's 830 on ESPN on Sunday night. And then on Monday night, It'll be Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and the world champions hosting the undefeated Indianapolis Colts on Sorry. Monday Night Football. I, I would, 7 and 0. Can they go to 8 and 0? I, I wouldn't be going out. I'd be home on Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. Yep. And I call, I talked to Bill Poley, yeah. the uh, general manager you said enough enough, of man. the Indianapolis Colts. And you know, there's, what are they, 7 and 0 now? Yep. And you know, we, uh, Dolphins, we got our un 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 undefeated record going. You got the champagne on I ice? I told Bill, I said, Bill, I'm not so concerned yet, but uh, I'm <laughs> I'm pulling for you. I really like Peyton and I like your team, but somewhere along the way I gotta lose one and then I gotta pull for you again. Third down and four, Missouri. Tigers could really use the scoring drive here before halftime. Linemen are trying to tell each other what's coming up. It's Brad Smith. And they didn't get enough for the first down, that's for sure. 
He got to midfield and maybe a little forward progress into Colorado territory, but he's about two full yards shy of the first down. Jordan Dizon came in, coming out with that stinger. He made the stop. There he is, number 44. I don't know which group is better, the Colorado offense or the Colorado defense, because they have not allowed Missouri to do much here today. They haven't allowed a 100-yard rusher on the entire season, and now Colorado's going to take another timeout with 27 seconds remaining, because if they stop them here on fourth down, they're going to get the ball back. And they would have one timeout remaining. Gary Barnett's team only two losses this year on the road to Texas and on the road at Miami. Yeah, and they're ranked what? Second, Second and, fifth? and sixth. Second and sixth in the uh, country. Yeah. That's that's pretty impressive. It is. You know, Penn State, I was impressed with Penn State, but you know, some of the other powers that used to be are, are making their ways back. Notre Dame for one. UCLA. UCLA. Alabama. Perfect. Alabama. No. How about Mike? Uh, how about Mike Shula? Doing a great job. They're going to have to score some more points, though, to keep that undefeated mark. They've winning by field goals in the last seconds in low-scoring ball games can't last forever. Carl Durrell doing a great job at UCLA. Sure is. And the Drews. Maurice and Drew Olson. 21 to 10, we understand Notre Dame leads Tennessee. Tennessee on, uh, boy, tough times. And you have coaches, coordinators resigning in yeah. midseason. We're talking about David Cutcliffe. Yeah, who was, a possibility. who was the offensive coordinator of Tennessee and then went to Mississippi and maybe coming back. Cross it now is out there for Missouri to punt. It's a nice kick. Is it going to go out the corner? Ooh, whoa, way down there. Per outstanding kick. Perfect kick. All the way to the one. You can't do it any better than that. Yep. 49 yard punt on the one yard line. Colorado wasn't thinking about that when they were taking all those timeouts. No, they weren't. They didn't think about 99 <laughs> yards in 17 seconds. <laughs> oh, this is this this is the way you draw them up. Absolutely perfect. And great job getting down there on the coverage unit by William Moore. To run that thing out of bounds at the one yard line. Actually inside the one. So now you got to be careful, even if you try to take a knee, you got to make sure that knee is not in the end zone. So that center's got to come off the ball right here for Joel Clatt or his running back or whomever. And Joel just did, and Joel just digs in down there as best he can. And that will wrap the second quarter up. So Colorado very, very impressive at home today. Took a turnover and made it a quick touchdown. A 56-yard field goal. Lawrence Vickers, three touchdowns rushing in the first half as he trots up the tunnel, number 17. They head to the locker room in Colorado comfortably in front, 24 to six as we check in with Lynn. Coach, a big first half, but what, what was more surprising for you, the consistency and power of Vickers or William Speed, the big burst in the first half? Well, the, uh, we, uh, I, I don't know which is more surprising. Uh, Vickers is playing really well in there, and uh, you know Patrick is going to be a really good player for us. We just got to stay on these guys. You can see what they can do uh, quickly, so just got to keep our intensity up right now. I know you want to keep that up for the second half. You got a whole second half to play, but when you have a kicker like Mason who comes in and can nail one from that distance, it's got to give you a real feeling of comfort. Yeah, you just get across the 50-yard line, you got a chance. I don't know that one cleared by about 10, 12 yards. So yeah, he's a great player. More of the same in the second half of the team? Yeah, that's what I hope. Okay, thanks. thanks. Thank you. All right, fellas, as you take a look at that long kick by Mason Crosby, the last three points that have been added on in this half, 24 to 6. We'll be joining John Craig and Aaron in New York for the Capital One Halftime Show right after this. Wrangler Five Star Premium Denim Jeans. Built strong. Haven't changed, hadn't much Built comfortable. But man, I still think Built right. It's a great Wrangler five star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Ringtone. Do you want me to sing? 
Just the good old boys Never meant it no harm Beats all you ever saw Been in trouble with the law Since the day they was born I love it. That's my that's my theme song. Ryan, 21! Ryan, prime rib! Season seared! Slow roast in an Outback! Try something bold. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. I'm open, I'm open! Julie, I mean you. Take me to Outback for their new Hearts of Gold Bronze Filet with sautéed artichokes, sun-dried tomatoes, and a light lemon Alfredo sauce. Yes, I will. Try something bold. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Guys, this is a Silverado half-ton crew. It has more horsepower and torque than Ford or Dodge. Paper flowers? Tin cans? <laughs> I love weddings. Now get an 06 Silverado Half Ton Crew Cab LS Two Wheel Drive for under $24.5 after cash back. See your local Chevy dealer. This is the Capital One Halftime Show, and we have an all new all time leader in rushing quarterbacks, Brad Smith of Missouri, headed towards 4,000 yards as he passes. Antoine Randall L. of Indiana today. Welcome, everyone. John Saunders, Greg James, and Aaron Taylor. We'll get you right to the scores and the highlights. In the SEC, Alabama is unbeaten, but boy, have they been living on the edge. Throw out last week's non conference game against Utah State. They just do not have a lot of offense for this team. Brody Coyle is a good quarterback. Quarterback, but here he overthrows his receiver and Jermaine Johnson comes up with the pick. Gil Saunders 1992 national championship team was Alabama, Alabama. with what defense there you go. Rody Coyle goes off the field Mississippi State. But th there's the defense. That's what I'm about. Talking about. <laughs> hey, hey, Rody Coyle's good enough. Don't worry about it. Play defense. A little bit of a stick there. Wisconsin and Penn State both teams controlling their destiny to win the Big Ten title. Michael Robinson. It's been about him this year. 43 yards to Deion Butler. This play coming off play action, but I liked about it. Michael Robinson sets his feet and puts the ball on the money. Great job by the young quarterback. The defense getting after it as well. Watch Stocko go down as he gets sacked. That's what I, that surprised me in this game here. Penn State's defense has totally dominated Stocko. And Brian Calhoun. Tony Hunt from nine yards up. Penn State is a 21 to nothing halftime lead. One second away from being unbeaten that team. Illinois and Ohio State. The Buckeyes still with a chance to win the Big Ten, but they need some help. First, they got to beat Illinois. Troy Smith, 41 yards to San Antonio home. This Buckeye offense has been impressive lately. They've been able to show some explosion. Their playmakers are finally making plays. NC State and Florida State. Florida State with a win, and they'll be in the ACC championship game. Chuck Amato, of course, used to be an assistant for Bobby Bowden. Andre Brown, 65 yards. We're the linebackers. What's happening there, Coach Mickey Andrews, with your defense there? Letting NC State run like that down the football field. On the road like that a confidence boost early in the game. Drew Weatherford though leads Florida State back as he hooks up with Chris Davis 33 yards. I like what I'm seeing out of the young freshman to rebound from that week uh, that game that he didn't play very well last week. He looked great on that play John. 10 10. Meanwhile another score the fighting Irish of Notre Dame Brady Quinn you have to bring him into the Heisman Trophy talk and he really doesn't get as much public as the rest of the guys Vince Young's of course the Matt Leinerts the Reggie Bushes and such. I, I, I've got Brady Quinn in there. I think Brady Quinn has been one of the leading stories in this country this year. His team's been outstanding. He has outstanding numbers. It's awesome to see the development what a coach can do with a quarterback who has talent and the way that they've progressed. I tell you what if he beats SC he'd probably be the number one favorite to win the Heisman right now but Brady Quinn is a leader. He does a great job. That team believes him. And Brady Quinn, guys, looks Thank like he God believes in himself. You, will you get over it? Leave it alone. It was relevant. No, it's over, all right? Make sure you talk about it. Stick around. More scores and highlights as we try and sort out things at the top of the ACC, the Big 12, and more. The Capital One Halftime Show. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to the Capital One M game. Today's event, the Mascot Chainsaw Massacre. Mascot Chainsaw Challenge. First up.
Mascots and chainsaws. Good concept. Flip. Vote for your favorite college mascot at CapitalOneBowl.com. Watch the Capital One Bowl to see who wins. What's in your wallet? Kill you okay? I'm going in. Going in where? Gonna save the company. Save the company from what? The servers. They're all over. Gotta get them before they get us. Gil, we're switching to IBM servers. That's a server? It's a blade. Denser, so you can fit more into less space. Did you say blade? Gil, put the keyboard down. Take back control with a scalable IBM e server blade center featuring Intel Xeon processors. Is that your tie on your head? That's yours. University of Colorado. These are the voices of Colorado's university, and this is our creed. At the University of Colorado, we act with honor, integrity, and accountability. In my interactions with students, faculty, and staff, we are the University of Colorado. We are the University of Colorado. We are the University of Colorado. Together, we're better. The Big 12 Conference. It's Capital One Halftime Show. Join us next Saturday. We start at noon Eastern time in the Big 10 or the Big 12. Then at 3.30 and 1 at 4 o'clock, Arizona State, UCLA for the West Coast only. Check local listings for the game available in your area. Time now for the no huddle highlights. We start with the number two team in the BCS poll. That would be Texas facing Baylor. Vince Young had another Vince Young type day. You know what, this Texas Longhorn team today knew they had to show up because the Baylor Bears on defense are much better than they've been in the past. Now, Ramones Taylor, who scores here, stop that. This is college football. Don't spoil the reputation of your team. Boston College in North Carolina. Boston College trying to keep pace with Florida State and a chance to go to the ACC championship game. But North Carolina's Wallace Wright returns the opening kickoff 90 yards, and BC gets eliminated. It was supposed to be BC that had something to play for, but it was North Carolina that came out and took care of business. How about this North Carolina team? They beat Virginia, had Miami on the ropes, and today taking care of a very good BC team. Big win for Northwestern today facing Iowa. Kirk Ferentz for Iowa had his team going early. Drew Tate, 10 yards on this touchdown run. As he rolls out, looks like he wants to pass and then just keeps it. 21 to 7 was the lead. But then Tyrell Sutton goes in from a yard out for Northwestern to get it down to a 27 to 21 game right here. And that would set it up for Brett Bazinet. You know what? Brett Bazinet is one of those quarterbacks you'd never give up on. He's got a team that believes in him and an offense that can get it done. How about Iowa? We thought they were going to compete for the championship this year. They're out. Guys, one more story we got to show you. Kansas blows out Nebraska, ending a 36-game losing streak. Question is, what about Bill Callahan? You know, I have people ask us on the street and in the airports everywhere. They're always saying, hey, is this guy got to go? Now? But I'll, I'll say this. Bill Callahan, this is the second year that he's been there. It might be time for them to start thinking about something else because it's not working. He's got to change something. And how about Nebraska getting rid of Frank Solich? Good thing he got rid of a guy who won 75% of his ball games. Nebraska football is in trouble. And you talk about the West Coast offense taking some time to get going. What about the defense? This whole program is worse with Bill Callahan there. It's Terrible. one thing to end the streak and then to get blown out by Kansas makes it even worse. Of course, we have a very busy weekend of golf here with the Tour Championship. For more on that, let's join Mike Tirico. Mike Tirico with the ABC Sports Golf Team in Atlanta. Third round of the Tour Championship is in the book. What a story from Bart Bryant, the 42-year-old journeyman until his win last September in Texas. Won the Memorial Tournament this past May. 18th hole today makes this bunker shot. He shot 66 today, leads by three over Retief Goose in the winner last year, and number one in the world, Tiger Woods. We start at noon Eastern on ESPN2 tomorrow, right here on ABC at 1 Eastern for the final round from Atlanta. Someone is saying yes instead of no to redeeming credit card miles. Find out who. I'm on it. <laughs> no blacked out. Brenda, you know we all say no. But I hear sometimes you say yes. Go 
from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, any time. Should have worked at Capital One. Ah. What's in your wallet? <laughs> Good news, men. Now we can sell our chimney caps directly to America. And we can get everything we need to make them from China. How are we going to do all that, then? FedEx will help us with all the shipping, even the complicated customs forms. What's wrong? We don't have to give up our chimney sweep jobs, though. Why? Of course not. Don't be silly. <laughs> FedEx, helping take your small business to the world. The Capital One Halftime Show. Brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? There's someone close to us who should not be close to us. In this town. Want to celebrate? Be careful who you trust. You want to go up to my room? It's getting kind of crowded down here. Tuesday. I'm so mean up here. Did President Bridges call on you from his deathbed to resign? Scandal rocks the White House. We have a dangerous leak. With what we've got, we own them. As the whole world turns against the first female president. Are you the source of the leaks? All new Commander in Chief, followed by an all new Boston Legal, Tuesday, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Tonight on ESPN at 7.45, it is the game of the day. One loss Miami against unbeaten Virginia Tech. For more, here's the game day crew and Chris Fowler. Thanks, John. Momentous night in the life of Marcus Vick. He's got to make enough plays and avoid the big mistakes against Miami's top-rated defense. Lee and Kirk, he does have a pretty good mentor, though, and big brother Michael who beat the Hurricanes here six years ago. The two obviously share a lot more than just name, school, and position. Everybody wants to know if Marcus can be like Mike. Wherever you go, and you, as long as your last name's Vic, you're going to be compared to Mike. Put the ball in his hands 70, 80 times, he's going to make a lot of plays on it. Have you ever have seen anything like this? My brother's 10 times better than me. A Michael-like move by Marcus. Throws the ball with great touch. Marcus Vic, perfectly thrown pass. I'm a dual threat at passing and also running. Marcus is really Marcus, and Michael is Michael, but I think they have a lot of the same qualities. Fantastic moves and a lot of talent, and it kind of runs in the family. Mark has more efficient passing numbers than Michael through his first eight starts, but you're going against Vic and the Hokies here tonight. Yeah, I'm Lee. going with Miami, and the reason I picked them to win this fall game, I think their defense can keep this game in low teens. I think the offense will chew up the clock with ball control, and Devin Hester, I think, makes a long play for a touchdown to win it either from offense or with the return. Well, I think that Miami defense will keep them in this football game, but I think their young quarterback, Kyle Wright, will eventually lose the game because of the pressure of the crowd and the Virginia Tech defense. Miami will play Play hard, play their guts out. But I tell you, by the time this one's over, Marcus Vick will no longer be looked at as Michael's brother. He'll be Marcus by himself with a big win. I mean, big points and yards hard to come by in this defensive showdown. And Hokie's trying to make a statement of those BCS voters. CSPN prime time, 7:45 Eastern time. Should be a lot of fun and a beautiful night in Blacksburg. John. Chris, thanks a lot. And Chris makes a great point about this. This is not just about an ACC matchup. Virginia Tech is trying to impress the voters and try and pass Texas. You can bet the people in Austin will be watching this rooting for Miami. Yeah, but Virginia Tech loses if they think about style tonight. They'll lose this football game. And I kind of disagree with Kirk a little bit here on this. I think if Kyle Wright will think back and reflect to his experience in Tallahassee early in the season against Florida State, the game speed, the environment, and all those things, I think he has a chance to have some success. But he has to find his tight end. And Greg Olson. I think that's the key to their offense. If they get Olson involved, I think they can go and move the football. They're not going to do it running all the time, but something like that. Yeah, but for them to have a game like they did against Florida State, remembering that Florida State, the offensive line of Miami could not protect Kyle Wright. That's going to have to change. You do that with running the football. You do it being physical because Virginia Tech, Daryl Tapp and company will bring the heat. They will. All right, guys, that's tonight at 745 Eastern Time on ESPN. Some NFL news before we leave you. Terrell Owens, wide receiver of the Philadelphia Eagles, has has been suspended for conduct detrimental to the team for comments about his quarterback Donovan McNabb and a lack of class in the team is exactly what he said. We want to remind you Sunday Night Football on ESPN. It's the Eagles without Terrell Owens facing the Redskins. Key matchup in the East. Then Monday Night Football, Colts and Patriots. Can the Colts get over the hump? Coming up after this message and a word from our ABC station. 
This classic Rose Bowl moment is brought to you by City. In the 1997 Rose Bowl, undefeated Arizona State found themselves down early to Ohio State. With less than two minutes left in the game, quarterback Jake Plummer scrambled to give the Sun Devils a 17-14 lead. But in the final seconds, Joe Germain connected with David Boston to give the Buckeyes the victory. Log on to ESPN.com Search City to vote for the all-time Rose Bowl moment. No, I'm just online paying the credit card bill. What? No, I'll be home soon. We don't want a late fee. Honey, I told you we can get I never saw this before. That's the last one, man. Let's go. Sometimes you can't help paying late. Avoid late fees with the new City Simplicity Card. No late fees when you make a purchase each billing period. City, live richly. You've been practicing for this your entire life. The Chrysler Town & Country, with Stow & Go Seating & Storage. During November only, get a thousand dollars bonus cash that gets you a Chrysler Town and Country LX for under twenty-three grand. Wednesday. So yeah. An all-new lost. Everyone will be talking about. Do you see him? What the hell is that? One of these survivors will be lost forever. Oh God! An all-new lost. Wednesday night, eight central, only on ABC. Mariah Carey, Kelly Clarkson, Gwen Stefani. It's a duel of the divas, but only one will be crowned the queen. Hit me! The American Music Awards, live Tuesday, November 22nd, 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Sunday on the 1015 Difference. Spacious three-bedroom, two-car garage includes appliances available immediately. It's a must-see. You won't believe the landlord who's renting places like this and getting away with it. An investigator's exclusive, Sunday at 10, only on 7 News. After being awarded the National Peabody and the Colorado Broadcasters Award for Best Newscast, 7 News is now awarded the Emmy for Best Evening Newscast. Mike Landis, Ann Trujillo, Mike Nelson, and Lionel Bienvenu. Colorado's Emmy Award-winning news team, 7 News. We all see the world through different eyes, and we all learn differently. And what is obvious to one may be invisible to another. But sometimes our biggest differences can, can also, also be our greatest assets. Because we don't really learn from those who see things the same way. We learn more from those who see them differently. So when we can view things through the eyes of another. And look at them in a new light. And look at them in a new light. There is no limit to what we can learn about each other. Learn about each other. And ourselves. Regis University. Learners becoming leaders. Now for a limited time. Come on down for a taste of Old Chicago. We're talking a special three-course menu of Old Chicago favorites for the deliciously low price of only $10.99. Your choice of starters, your choice of pizza, calzone, or lasagna, and your choice of desserts, all three for only $10.99. This tasty trifecta won't last long, so get down here today. Old Chicago. Eat. Drink. Be yourself. In the mid-50s this hour with partly cloudy skies. Well, if Colorado keeps playing like this, the ABC Sports Banner will be a Big 12 North Banner for them again, and they'll be playing in Houston, the Big 12 Championship. 24-6 at halftime. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Swanee will be down in the field joining us in just a second. And I don't know, partner, when we've done a game where two quarterbacks have played this well for a whole half, but one guy doesn't have a touchdown pass, and his team's ahead 24-6. I don't know what Missouri can do, but they better put it in gear right now. Well, you know, we said early on Brad Smith had to throw. They wanted to force him to throw. He has thrown. He has thrown well. They just haven't gotten any production out of him. 14 out of 16, 127 yards of touchdown. I think the lack of ground game and the way the defense is playing for Colorado right now is the difference. And I really think the big, the turnover, uh, the, the fumble by Temple, the running back, yep. uh, Missouri, and the, they got a touchdown out of that. They had good field position. They had recovered an onside kick. They had the ball inside the uh, Colorado territory. If they could have gone down and scored in that, it would probably be a different ball game. Lawrence Vickers has been sensational today, too. He's probably having his best game of the season right now. 55 yards, nine carries, and he scored three touchdowns. He's been a load. They can't bring him down. Well, they can, and it's, it's, it's interesting that 
the, the scat backs, the smaller backs that they've had, haven't played today. Right. And this has really got to uh, give uh, Colorado a boost to, to get through this ball game without using those two smaller backs. Just use Vickers. If they can get through without using them and the injuring them, it'll be a big thing for them. There's his three touchdowns on the day. He might be on his way to our Chevy MVP. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Bob and Brad, I talked to Gary Pinkle as he came onto the field. Obviously, he's disappointed with the way his Missouri team played in the first half. The turnovers are mistakes. He said our team just has to focus, stay the course. He says, got to give Colorado credit. They've done a good job in that first half. He says, we've hurt ourselves more than anything else. Yep, no doubt about that, especially the one time they put it on the ground. So, Mason Crosby, who had a 56-yard field goal in the second quarter, tees it up. He'll kick it away. Line drive is returnable. Takes a funny bounce at the five for Tony Temple. Temple from the one. Broke a tackle at the 20. He lost the ball again. You know, he he runs, he runs with his arms, and his right arm that he carried the ball with is out away from his body. Bob just talked about this, and here he is on the kick return. Look, look at the arm in his right arm. And he doesn't protect it when he gets into traffic. You wonder how many more times he'll see the field today. You know, you know, if running backs can't play running back if they put the ball on the ground. You just can't do it. Yeah, they save themselves there by recovering the fumble, and they'll work from the 25 yard line. Smith wanting to throw on first down. Don't get the chance. Run out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. In fact, he might have lost a foot or so. Our Pacific Live game summary statistically in the first half. Colorado at 235 total yards. Everything the, relatively even. Look at the completion percentage for both quarterbacks. The points and I mean the turnovers rather and the points off turnovers. Pretty much the difference. 24 to 6 big difference on the scoreboard Missouri would love to come out here to open the third quarter and get something going always important to come out of the locker room and try to reestablish something Smith's going to try to run it's got blockers in front flags are down at the line of scrimmage and Brad's down after a short gain of about two Manapuna made the tackle and again penalty marker down and it's a legal procedure a false start I think it was a motion man coming toward the line of scrimmage. Illegal formation offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. There you go. Penalty decline, third down. So they what decline it, it's going to bring up third down and what, long. What, what Missouri would like to do is come out, like you said, Brad, and, and get something out of this drive. They've got the wind with them, but, but they've got to just pick up first downs, and, and Brad Smith has got to be the guy that, that does it. To the five receiver grouping with Marcus Woods, the tailback, way down at the bottom of your screen. Center of the field is wide open. Sure is. Can't spread out 22 guys on a football field more than what we're seeing right here. Smith broke a tackle, eluded the sack. On the run, he got it to Woods, but he is out of bounds. Nobody is getting open downfield. He had all kinds of time when he scrambled to the sideline. The receivers have to separate from their defenders when he's when he's scrambling around. Let's take a look. Go ahead and roll it. Watch the receivers coming downfield now. Now he's outside the pocket. Now somebody get open. Which he's covered here. He's covered here. That's the guy he ends up throwing it to and he throws it out of bounds. So they have to give it up right away to open quarter number three. Cross it to punt. Nice kick. Robinson way back at the 22. Flags are down. Robinson getting some blockers, but I think it's all coming back. All that work for nothing. For Stefan Robinson, would have been a 26 yard return after the 51 yard punt, but it's all coming back somewhere inside the 25, more than likely. There have not been a lot of penalties today, but that has been really something that's been a problem for Colorado all year long. Well, and for Missouri. Colorado's average in double Illegal figures in the penalties. Number 10 on the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. We asked Gary about that yesterday, about the number of penalties. 
There's the one there. And it's going to be on Terry Washington. This is only the third penalty of the game, but asking him about the penalty problem, and he's been talked out, I think, about that, and says, I just don't know. I don't know what. He said a lot of them we feel like weren't penalties. And you said to him, you don't mind defensive penalties because it's uh, aggression. Exactly. It's the offensive penalties that will drive you nuts. The, the not lining, not having seven guys on the line of scrimmage, illegal motion, the movement. You know, those things will kill you offensively. There they throw out the little pass out to Robinson. They did that in the first half on the left side of the field. This time they throw it out to Stefan, and he has good positive yardage. Again, it gets about nine yards. That's what they got the first time they threw it out to him. On that penalty right there, Brad, they lose 31 yards. Yep. They go back uh, to the 15-yard line from the 46. I mean, it's... it's uh, Winning football, you can't play winning football like that. So Robinson got nine, it's second down and a yard. Lawrence Vickers, a single setback. Poppins down the tight end in motion. They fake it, and the pump fake, and the ball is loose. Scooped up by Missouri, touchdown. Jamar Smith takes it into the end zone. Somebody hit Joel Klatt as he was trying to get the ball up to throw it. Took a perfect hop to Jamar Smith, and he scores from about 12 yards out. It was a, just a pump and go. They were trying to hit the uh, out and up. Striker Shulak, I think, is the guy that made the hit on the quarterback. Take a look at it over here inside. The defensive lineman just comes inside, pump. Now he's waiting for him to pump and go. This is this would get Missouri back in this ball game. All right, just watch his uh, arm. I don't know that that arm ever got a chance to come forward. It was Shulak who made the hit. Here's another angle. Here you see Shulak coming. There's the pump. Now he pulls it back. And I don't know if that arm ever got a chance to come forward. At any rate, it took a perfect hop to Jamar Smith, and he takes it in the end zone. Hey, Brad, I'm, I'm looking at that, and I, I see what you're seeing with the arm not going forward. But it looks to me like the shoulder is moving forward, uh, and the defensive man impedes the arm. I think the arm is moving forward. The hand is moving forward in the forward motion. Whether the ball was being released, I don't know, but the, the arm is coming, the hand is coming forward. This is about as many angles as you can get, and we're giving the folks upstairs all the views that they're using. After a further review, it was a fumble. The play stands is called. It's a touchdown for Missouri. So Missouri with a touchdown. See, in the NFL, the old tuck rule, that would be an incomplete pass, but not in college. Right. And there are some in the NFL that think that they should adopt the college rule. And there's some in college that think they should adopt the NFL rule. <laughs> yeah, Missouri's going to go for two here. Brad Smith's a perfect kind of quarterback on two-point conversions because he gives you so many opportunities to either do it himself, which he might, or do that, which didn't work, but there's a flag down. It's going to be pass interference on a two-point conversion on Lorenzo Sims. So they'll get another crack at it. So it's going to be 24 to something here. Here in the third quarter on a big, big 22 play. 22 on the defense, pass interference. Ball goes to the one and a half yard line. Half the distance to the goal, and they'll line up again. So now it goes inside the two, the one and a half, which may or may not change the theory of things. You're a lot closer if you want to run it. They show the same type of formation, however. That single coverage out here at the top. The option, there's a late pitch. She got it to him. He didn't make it. About a foot short for Marcus Woods. Manapuna made a nice play. So did Lorenzo Sims, who's the guy that was penalized on the previous play. So failed two-point conversion. They missed an extra earlier. They missed a double extra there, but they did get the fumble return for the score. 24-12, Colorado.
340 horsepower Chrysler 300C. The moment you see it is the moment you want it. Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. During November only, get $1,000 bonus cash. They get you a Chrysler 300 for around 23 grand. This is not what smart travelers do. Absolute lowest rates, guaranteed. Thrifty.com. Book smart. Some beers have a full taste, but are too filling. Some beers are easy to drink, but don't satisfy. Then, there's Budweiser Select. Made from only the finest hand-picked American and Bavarian hops. Budweiser Select is brewed longer for a bold taste that finishes clean. Everybody has their something, but Budweiser Select has it all. I was cooking dinner and I just fell asleep. <coughs> I collapsed. I couldn't call for help. But ADT did. They saved my life. An ADT monitored fire detector actually can signal ADT so we can call for help. Call now and save over $100 off the regular price when you buy ADT's family package. And now for fire prevention season, buy one smoke detector and get another one free for a limited time. Call today. ADT. Always there. This is not what smart travelers do. But this is, go to thrifty.com for our absolute lowest rates, guaranteed. Thrifty.com, book smart. An unforgettable two-hour Extreme Makeover Home Edition, all new ABC Sunday. What a great name for a defensive end, Stryker. Stryker Shulak has started the last four games. I think he'll start for about three more years. He's the guy that forced the fumble of Joel Klatt. And Jamar Smith, his line mate, picked it up, took it in for the touchdown. 24 to 12 after the missed two point conversion. There's the bunched kickoff. Cross it. Drives it deep. And it will not be returnable. So Colorado will go back to work at the 20 yard line. 20. Well, guys, I'm with Chip. You see, he's got on the Boy Scout shirt here. And that's because there are over 3,000 Boy Scouts from Boulder and the Colorado uh, and the uh, Denver area here for the game. Uh, the Buffalo Boosters paid for the tickets to have them come to show their support to the Boy Scouts. And at halftime, they unfurled the flag on the field and supported the troops overseas. And you see Chip here. Looks like he's an Eagle Scout. Are you an Eagle Scout, Chip? <laughs> okay. <laughs> A Buffalo that's an Eagle. Oh, it's all American, boys. There it's you all go. American. They had the full-length flag, as Ronnie said, out here at halftime, 100 yards long. That was quite a scene. Derek Ming made the stop on Byron Ellis. And Terrell, who was shaken up earlier in the ballgame, heading to the locker room again. You know, you talk about college football, and one of the things people ask me about college versus pro games, the tradition at college football games. Yep. And one of the great traditions at, at, in college is, is Ralphie. Every time you come to, to the University of Colorado, the mascots, one of the best in the country. Ralphie made both her runs today, pregame and halftime. Last week, she was a little fidgety. She didn't want to run. She didn't want to run. She didn't want to run last week. This is the first female Ralphie we've had, isn't it? No, I think they said, I think Ralphie 4 was a lady, too. This is Ralphie 5. Ralphie 5. She came out of the blocks today. There was no doubt. She put her head down and <laughs> look out. <laughs> little temperamental last week. You know how that can be. I'm not going to go any farther than that. I like third uh, down. I think I think <laughs> I'll, I'll say John. I like Renegade down in uh, the horse down in uh, Florida State. Yeah. Uga. Uga. I like Georgia. Uh, Traveler. Traveler. Traveler at USC. Good. I like that one too. Flat on third and long. Wide open man is Stephon Robinson, and he got to the first down. Little guy. Sophomore out right here in Denver. My quarterback got killed again. <laughs> yeah, but his receiver got a first down. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> Watch the quarterback on this one as he's going to release the football. Receiver's coming across. Bang. Two things. Here's a receiver, and look at the quarterback getting killed. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's a tough cookie back there. Clatt, he's taking some hits today. Including the one that caused the fumble on the previous drive. But a first down. He is 6'1 and 2'10, so he's good. And 
Vickers going nowhere this time. We asked Joel yesterday. You know, he's been around, made a lot of starts, and uh, one of the better passers in the Big 12, senior. Mentioned to him what lies down the road, and he said he'd love to play pro football or have a chance to play pro football. And you know, we, we've seen him a couple of times avoid the rush. And and uh, one of the things that, that he, one of the monikers that he and Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, go by is your feet are a part of the protection. Mm -hmm. Not only is he smart and has a strong arm and can move, but his feet, but he understands the feet are part of his protection. And so he's, year, he's avoided some. Last year he had trouble with interceptions. This year he's avoiding them beautifully. They've only had 10 sacks coming in at second best in the uh, in the conference. Play fake, going deep. Overshot his man who had a half step back there, Evan Judge. Judge has picked up some big pass plays today, incomplete that time though. Well, if the Tigers are going to get back in this ball game, you're going to see how they did it. It's just the way they did it the first time. The defense is going to have to come up with some plays because the offense isn't doing much today. Well, this is a chance for a defense to make a play. It's third down and a long 12 coming up. And Colorado gave up the ball the last time they had it. On the fumble. They hadn't given it up very much because nope. they, they were best in the conference in, in the fewest giveaways. Two out of five on the third down conversions. Flat in the pocket, fires, and he put it in a triple coverage, incomplete. Sipniewski had his hands on it, and somebody made a hit on him to knock it out. So they're going to have to give it up, and Missouri's going to get the ball right back. This one's getting more and more interesting as we go. Five steps and throw. Look at this. Boy, it's he there. It in, he, he did, didn't yep. he? He sure did. It was uh, three guys around him. It was there, but it was just tough to hold on. Marcus King might have gotten a hand on it right at the very last moment. Marcus Woods back deep. They look behind John Torp. Look out. Almost got it blocked. There's a flag. The flag is down. William Moore came flying in there, got a great break on the ball, but it's roughing the kicker. He came very, very close. Here's another look. Got the right foot and down went Torp. Yeah, they've got to call those. Oh, they sure do. Great effort. He took the right angle and everything. You've got to protect the kicker. The guy's on one leg. He's unprotected. He didn't hit him trying to block it, but he hit him with his body sliding right here. Yep. And here comes the laundry. So first down Colorado by penalty. So they're re recipient of a penalty that helps them instead of hurts them. Yeah, that's 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 a tough call for Missouri. It's the right call. You're going to get the ball back, but uh, they're trying to make a play by blocking blocking a punt. Colorado's only had eight plays in this half, and they've only gained 10 yards. They've got a first and 10, and they've got it into Missouri territory at the 49-yard line. Check in with an update and go to John in New York. Brad, Alabama in a bit of a struggle with Mississippi State. This is the opening kickoff of the second half. It fumbled, and Matt Miller picks it up and goes 15 yards for the touchdown. So special teams getting it done. Then the defense, Rudy Griffin with the interception. 17 yards for a touchdown. Alabama doesn't have an offensive touchdown, but they have a 17 to nothing lead. Brad. That's the slowest 17 yards Ooh. for a touchdown I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Second down. That's cold. Platt. I'm going to put it on the line out there. Incomplete. Jason Simpson makes a nice stop. A nice play defensively over there. Bring up third down and seven. Let's take a look at the BCS standings brought to you by all states. We mentioned Miami number six and Texas number two are the two teams that have beaten Colorado. And they both did so with Colorado being on the road. USC number one. Texas routed Baylor today. I don't know if the 62 that they hung up was to try to get everybody's attention or if that's just the way that game went. We didn't get a chance to see a lot of it. I think of, I think of the five teams there, Brad, that are undefeated. I think Alabama has the toughest uh, route by far. They've got Auburn. They've got maybe Georgia in the SEC title game. they got some work left to do, that's for sure. Out of bounds. 
the 37. First down for Dusty Spray. Virginia Tech's got a big ball game tonight. Who did ever on ESPN at 7:45 tonight? Game day guys been there all half the week, and the, this morning the crowd will be geared up for that night game. You know, you know who's laying in the bushes? That's the University of Miami. There's, nobody has given them any. They have not talking about them. They'll give them any credit. <laughs> And they can, you know, that's, you remember the old days in Miami, they used to go on the road and win anywhere yep. and everywhere. They've only been underdogs about four times, I think, since Larry Coker is a coach, and they've won them all. They're an underdog tonight, supposedly. The one thing that they don't have that they normally have is a veteran quarterback. Right. That's, a, that's a nasty place up there. It's a nasty place to go and play. You know, that's a tough spot, and that may in itself be what the turns the tide. I was talking about the stadium. I love the floats in Blacksburg. It's a beautiful place. Oh, I, I think. It's I, a tough place. I think Frank Beamer has done a great job. Tremendous. Uh, of building that program and the the, the players and doing it the right way and the fans and, you know it's 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 just a wonderful story face it they're a national power every year yeah but they've got to stop start talking like they're a national power not taking that kind of backseat position maybe wanting to be more like the underdog in the big contest that, that might have a voice they might have a big voice tonight if they win that game over miami that's for sure time out 9 34 remaining third quarter colorado driving with a 12-point lead Town and Country with Stow and Go seating and storage. During November only, get a thousand dollars bonus cash that gets you a Chrysler Town and Country LX for under twenty-three grand. Oh. This is not what smart travelers do. <laughs> but this is. Go to thrifty.com for our absolute lowest rates, guaranteed. Thrifty.com. Book smart. 1839, Fred Miller considers his father's field politics, but realizes the world needs a great beer more than it needs another politician. Good call, Fred. Pick up some 1855 lager, our tribute to Fred's first beer. Introducing Taco Bell's new steak or chicken nachos Bel Grande. Grilled authentic carne asada steak or marinated all. Introducing Taco Bell's new nacho crunch grilled stuffed burrito. Authentic carne asada steak. Warm nacho cheese sauce and crunchy tortilla strips. Wrapped up and grilled to go anywhere. For the burrito that's fun to crunch, think outside the bun. But this is, go to thrifty.com for our absolute lowest rates. Guaranteed. Thrifty.com. Book smart. The Golden Buffalo Band here in Boulder. Shadows over Folsom Stadium now. Getting a little bit cooler. It's been a beautiful day. 24 to 12, the hometown Buffaloes lead. 11th play of the drive now. Second and 10. Clap over the middle, wide open. Sipniewski, the big tight end, and he rumbles down to the 20-yard line. Got a flag in the backfield by the referee. Rough the passer. Yeah. You said about three times today, my quarterback got killed again. Well, this time they got him, and uh, the flag flew. Looked like it was Brian Ruffin Smith. The passer, 39 defense. Half the distance, first down. Number one pass rusher for Missouri. Just got there a little bit too late. After Clad had thrown it, gave him a shot in the back. Right there. Oh. Well, Brad, coming onto the field, I talked to one of the officials and I said, You guys got a good game going on. He goes, Yeah, that's if everybody maintains control. They noticed that the Missouri team was getting a little testy. And he says, As long as they remain under control, we'll have a good game in the second half. The chippier they'll get because as this game goes along, if Colorado scores again, then they're really in a hole one more time. Defense hitting hard out there though. Jason Simpson, their senior captain from the secondary, makes a stop. He's a good player. Making his 38th career start. This defense, this defense has had three takeaways each of the last four ball games. Defense of uh, Take away down here a little earlier on the last drive by Colorado set up or scored a touchdown. They need a couple of more. But more importantly, they need to stop this drive first. 
They'd like to hold Colorado to a field goal. You know the field goal is a pretty much automatic with the leg that Crosby has. Vickers on the ground. And they get him stopped at about the six-yard line. Picked up four. And we're down under eight minutes and 20 seconds in the third quarter. 24 to 12. Colorado trying to avenge for a loss last year as Missouri snapped a five-game Colorado winning streak. 17 to 9 was the final last year at Missouri. Overall, this is a 70th meeting. And Missouri leads 36 wins, 30 losses. There have been three ties back in the old days prior to overtime. And Colorado's won 17 of the last 20, though. Third down. Poppenstein, the tight end in motion. Flat back to throw. Buys himself some time. Back to the end zone. Got him. Touchdown. Sipniewski. What a great move by Sipniewski. And I thought that was a great athletic move by the quarterback. There you go. It's nice to have a guy that's 6'7 for a target when he's tucked back there almost by the goalpost and you're running out of time. Six yard touchdown pass. And Joel Platt's 14th scoring toss of the year. Extra point upcoming. Up yep, and good. In fact, it almost went into Coach Barnett's patio up there outside his office. I thought it was going to break the window. <laughs> Sipniewski is the tight end on this side. He's just going to run to the back corner of the end zone. Now, this is, this is the way the play is designed right here. Quarterback in the pocket. Sipniewski running here. Now, watch what they do athletically. Both of them adjust. Sipniewski stops and moves back to the inside, and the quarterback buys some time by moving to the outside. That's what I meant by Sipniewski. He wasn't open on the original route. The quarterback bought some time, so he slid back along the back line, and as you mentioned, a big target. And you know what that looked like? It looked like a third baseman throwing on the run, didn't it? Yep. That's what it used to be, he because a, that's a tough throw. Yep. Well, he can make all the throws. That's why I think he's got a shot in the NFL. He's big, he's strong, he's smart, he's got good feet. Our progressive drive summary, drive insurance from progressive, 80 yards, 14 plays. And that's the third touchdown drive of 80 yards or more today. Missouri will start at the 20. Well, part of the game plan for Colorado, Bob and Brad, as you talked about that long drive of 80 yards, was to make sure that man right there, Brad Smith, wasn't on the field all day long. And one of the best ways you can handle that is just make sure your offensive team possesses the football, move it down the field. So now in a 19-point hole, Jimmy Jackson into the backfield and a little shovel pass intended for him. Incomplete. That's not a fumble. Forward pass incomplete. Jackson's first appearance, I think, in the lineup today. Redshirt freshman, the intended pooch pass receiver. So Colorado, some long drives today. They've had what? Three over 80 yards, including a 94 yarder. That last drive kept alive by the roughing the passer penalty. Kept it going. Good point. Big score for the Buffs. Brad Smith, look out from behind, hit from behind, and incomplete. Abraham Wright came around, swung his hand just when Brad Smith was letting go of the ball. Incomplete. So that's going to be third down and ten. Wright, another guy that's a starter here recently, the last three games of last year and started all of this year. He's a transfer from Northeast Oklahoma and in junior college. Third and ten. Crowd coming to life for the Colorado defense. Smith initially had time. Buys himself some more. Nobody to go to. Run out of bounds and now a scuffle over there on the Colorado bench. The 
referee right in the middle of it. To be honest with you, I don't know if the flag's been thrown or not. I didn't see it. I don't see a flag at this point. Uh, apparently not. It's legal there. Well, that, and that's not a penalty? Well, no, I think that should be a penalty. I think so, too. He threw him right into the kicker's net, and it yeah. was about four yards out, out of bounds. You're out of bounds. you got to stop. He's done. Now you don't need the shove. Yeah. And that probably should have been a personal foul, but the uh, officials don't see it that way. Fourth down. Cross it to punt. late fair catch call but got it called at the 41 yard line John Saunders has an update from New York John what do you got Brad the singular All-America player of the week update Vince Young with another terrific day 16 of 27 298 yards and a couple of touchdowns passing 53 yards in the ground text the word vote to 87654 now on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a trip to the national championship. Texas by the win, but by the way, wins 62 to nothing. Brad. Wow. Well, we'll see Texas next week against a kind of a surprising Kansas squad. Kansas a winner over Missouri last week and throttled Nebraska today. Vince Young just so effortless. Plays the game. Here's a throw out. Patrick Williams. And Williams crosses midfield down to the 49. As we take a look at our Dr. Pepper Big 12 update from today, Kansas 40 to 15, 36 straight years. They've been slapped around by Nebraska and they slapped back today. Yeah, and that's up. Iowa State stays in the North Hunt, 45 17. Had Kansas State beaten Iowa State and Nebraska lost to Kansas, and if Colorado would have won this game as they are right now, they'd already be in the Big Ten of the Big 12 championship game. But Iowa State. Still hangs in there by virtue of uh, their win. Missouri's got to win today and then keep on winning. Right now they're in a big hole. Trying to stay with the Buffaloes. And Joel Platt throws that one out of bounds. So speaking of the standings, to sort of update you on the Big 12 North, here's how it looks. Colorado right now trying to go to 5-1 and one and 7-2. and two. Missouri. They could tie Colorado with a win here today and uh, would have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Iowa State 3-3 three and three and then down the list. Mark Mangino, though, the last two weeks for Kansas with those two wins, 5-4 and four there, came away from being bowl eligible. Yeah, That's Colorado, good. the next the next couple of games is at Iowa State and then Nebraska here. So they need to win one of those. Especially the Iowa State game. But Iowa State would be their closest rival. Great second ever by Vickers there on third down and one to get the first down. He was stopped about two yards behind the line of scrimmage and bounced off and used that power and size to get the first down at the 47. You know who's kind of uh, making a, in the Big 12 that's making kind of a mini run? Not of any title or anything, but has come back a little bit? Oh. Oklahoma. Yeah, they have. They've won their last three and, 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 the three teams they lost to early on. Now they they lost to TCU. TCU. It was now their 18th. Right. They Texas. lost at UCLA. Yeah. UCLA's undefeated. Number five, and they lost uh, uh, to Texas. They don't look sick, like yeah. such bad losses. Yeah, they're not so bad now. Vickers, all the way down to the 41-yard line. Another nice run by Lawrence. He might be on his way to a 100-yard day with those three touchdowns if he keeps on toting it. He's got 65 right now. Really like the way this guy has played today. Mentioned earlier, senior out of Houston, and of course that's the site of the Big 12 championship game, the first uh, Saturday of September, Reliance Stadium. And right now it's starting to look like uh, might be Colorado, and maybe a rematch with Texas. Already lost to Texas. And talking with Gary Barnett, and uh, not just Gary Barnett, but other coaches around the conference. And they readily admit, they said, you know what? Let's, we're all pretty good. Everybody in the conference is pretty good. And on certain weeks, we can be real good. But Texas, whoa, they're, they're really good. Above. And everybody talks about, I mean, you, you see Vince Young, but they, everybody talks about their offensive and defensive lines, how they're dominant in the offensive and defensive lines. Yep. Yesterday, 
John Watson, the uh, offensive coordinator here at Colorado, said, I think their defense is better than last year at Texas. <laughs> Bob and I and Lynn looked at each other and said, they lost Derrick Johnson and they're better? <laughs> Here's Vickers again. Another third and short, another first down. He said, they got number two. Yeah, they do. That linebacker Harris. Yeah, <laughs> and they got that Killebrew kid, number 40, that likes to play a little yeah. bit. And number 39. And then the list goes on and on and on. Hob <laughs> was it Ho Hobson? Yeah. Hobson? <laughs> Robeson. That's Robson. That's what it is. Robson. Number 39. So we'll see them next week. Third time now, Lawrence Vickers has run for a first down and a third down conversion. He says, My elbows are bleeding, guys. Somebody get something on there. I'll get back in. First down at the 35. Colorado, a time consuming march here. Just doing nothing fancy but running the football. Head to head. Simpson made the tackle on Byron Ellis. Colorado's offensive line give them some credit more and Daniels and Sanders and Fenton and Harrison O'Neill and all those guys they've done a nice job coming off the ball today they have and if and if they're to, 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 to compete against Texas in the championship game they're going to have to run the football they can throw it well enough but they just need to improve this run game now to just over three and a half minutes in the third quarter as they have run it five straight times and the throws they made have been ones that were very safe. They'll run it again. Ellis again, and no gain on this one. It's going to bring up third down and five, almost five and a half. And Bob and Brad, as you, as you watch this Colorado team move down the field, you also have to feel for the Missouri defense having to face again the kicker like Mason Crosby, because in a sense they. They have to understand that once they cross the 50 yard line, they've now put Colorado in scoring territory. Right. And so they, they always have to take a few more risks before you get to that particular point. As you said, Swanee, you're really defending 50 yards instead of 70. I mean, there's, there's a whole different dynamic to how you can score with Colorado once you cross midfield. It's three usually. Here's the throw from Clatt just over the hands of Judge. Had him out there. Evan got his hands on it, but pretty nice coverage by Marcus King. Marcus had an interception in this ball game last year that helped the Missouri win, and he breaks that one up, and out comes the guy that Swanee just talked about. This might be a chip shot. This might be only about 48. <laughs> this is, it's well, it's in it's still. The wind is still blowing pretty good. The wind is in Mason Crosby's face right now. Fourth down and five. This will be a 48 yard field goal attempt to hit from 56 in the second quarter. <laughs> wow. He missed it, but he hit it a mile. <laughs> no chip shot there. No change in the score either. Two minutes, 31 seconds remaining. Third quarter, 31 to 12, Colorado. Getting high cholesterol down is important. For some people, it's even more important. You've been to the doctor, good. You've changed your diet and are getting exercise. Excellent. You've tried just about everything. Now medical information comes along that says you may need to get that bad cholesterol even lower. Now what do you do? Well, if your doctor says aim lower, ask about Crestor. Crestor, along with diet, can lower bad cholesterol by up to 52%. That's about half. Is Crestor right for you? Discuss it with your doctor. Crestor is not for everyone, including people with liver disease. And women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant, simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you're taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as that may be a sign of serious side effects. Do you still need to get your cholesterol lower? Aim lower with Crestor. When you're a star like me, things are taken care of. You see? A second bag. Second. Even my independent insurance agent spoils me. Ryan, after comparing a number of companies, I recommend Drive Insurance from Progressive. You'll get a policy customized just for you. How does the other half live? <laughs> Actually, I do it for everyone. Do you? To find an agent who'll take care of you, go to driveinsurance.com.
We have a dangerous leak. Tuesday. Gotten so mean up here. You wanna go up to my room? Scandals rock the White House. Can I celebrate? As the world turns against the first female president. Are you the source of the leaks? All new Commander in Chief, Tuesday, 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. Take a look at our Chrysler passing playbook box. All right, we talk about zone coverages. You quarterbacks are looking at the linebackers. You know, how do you tell they, they're going to drop? They're going to drop straight back. So let's take a look. The linebackers see the linebackers dropping straight back. And when they do that, then the thing you want to do is either throw over them or in front of them. This time, Colorado throws in front of them. They drop straight back. They're zoning. They're not covering anybody man to man. So you throw either underneath them or over them or between them. And Stefan Robinson goes out for the first down. Now it's Missouri's turn offensively after the missed field goal. And Jackson spurts out of there down to about the 40 yard line. Got there in a hurry. Little Jimmy Jackson, 5'8, 195 pounder. And he has a nice run on first down. Picked up nine. And Missouri goes without a huddle, not necessarily a hurry up, but at some point they might start to hurry it up a little bit more. They've got a huddle called a fastball or uh, something that's basically to that effect where they will get up to the line and snap it in a hurry, right, Bob? Yeah. Mizzou's first first down of the second half right there. Move the sticks out to the 46 yard line. I guess I look like a fool on that playbook. None of my drawings worked up, so. Oh, they didn't? No. I missed that. I was no. watching the game. Yeah. Well, we know what you meant. Drop the three linebackers, throw it to Stefan. There you go. And let him do something. Nice hit. Jarrett Burrell on the play on the corner. College football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. City Simplicity Credit Card. City Live Richly. And drive insurance from Progressive. Available only through an agent or broker. Relax and just drive. Missouri's trying to drive here. Colorado's defense isn't letting them. At Folsom Field. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew with it. Second down and 10 Tigers. Brad Smith's in trouble. Trying to scramble out of it. He got rid of the ball and then got deposited over there at the 33 yard line by. Walter Boydo and Brad hasn't gotten up yet. Yeah. Took a pretty big hit over there. Well, he was. That's a tough way to scramble to your left and throw the ball away for a right-handed quarterback because you expose yourself right there. Oof. We might see Chase Daniel coming in as the trainers are coming all the way across the field now for Missouri. And Brad a little bit woozy it looks like. Second half, Missouri has done absolutely nothing. Their defense has uh, put up the one score on the fumble recovery for a touchdown, but the offense hasn't done much. So the trainer's out, Chase Daniel up. Warming up, he's already played some in uh, the ball game. As we mentioned, by design, not because of anything Brad Smith did wrong, because his numbers at one point were flawless. And they're still pretty good. 15 out of 21, but just the one touchdown, and he has not been able to run today. And you know, it's it's odd because when he has the big rushing game, that's when they win. He had 38 yards rushing against Kansas on Saturday. They lost. That followed his 246 yards rushing against Nebraska. He was held to 57 by Texas. They lost that one. Then he had 184 against Oklahoma State. So when he runs, yeah. that's how the engine runs in Missouri, and it's not happening today. So here's Chase Daniel on the spot in the big game. Just a young guy, freshman, on the road with a minute to go in the third quarter, trailing by 19. A true freshman. Yep. He's trying to find some room, going to have a holding call as he scrambles out of trouble and might get a first down, but I think it's all coming back. I think it is, but that is that is exactly what we have not seen from Brad Smith today. Scrambling around and then just taking off straight up the field and getting as much as you can. It almost seems, while we wait for the call here, guys, that in this ball game, Brad Smith was dropping back to pass and really wanting to pass and reluctant to run. Yep. 79 on the offense. 10 yards, third down. Tyler Llewellyn, the tackle, is the guy that was guilty of the hold, and Brad's still over there with his helmet off. Remember, it was Chase Daniel we mentioned against <laughs> Iowa State who came in 
Oops. and took over for uh, Brad when he had a concussion. These are the coaches on the Missouri yeah. sideline. Now, those are the four. There's four of them over there that is signaling the play into the quarterback. Now, which one is live and which one, the other three, are the dummies? Throw intercepted. Jared Burrow on the interception coming back the other way. Second Missouri turnover, and Colorado's got it back. Jared Burrow, the little guy, and I mean, if he's 5'10", he's lucky, and if he's 160, it's sop and wet. He comes up with a nice play. Burrow's over here on this side. It's going gonna, it's gonna to run a curl down in there, and he's just going to jump on it. Burrow's right here. Slides to the inside, sees it all the way. That's his second interception of the year. Daniel trying to get it out there. Chase, that's his second uh, interception, the quarterback, that he has thrown this year. Tried to get it to Rucker, who's been his big play man at tight end. Now Clatt comes up throwing. And he zipped it in there. Wow, that's a throw. Dusty Sprague, good catch. There was some company around that ball, and Joe Klatt put it the only spot he could. 19 yards right in front of Sprague. Look at this. Look at this one. On the run, fire the ball. It's like a third baseman throwing the ball across the diamond. I mean, he can throw the ball. He's strong. Got a good head. Here's the guy that got him the football. Jared Burrow. Here's a quick throw out to Stefan Robinson again. Robinson, they've been making pretty good yardage with that today. They got nine the first couple times they tried it, and this time they get 11. Getting the ball to their playmakers, the guys that can make plays. Bur uh, uh, Robinson with all the speed, the tight ends with their size and their speed. And getting the clap outside the pocket, strong arm. This team... Uh, this uh, Colorado team is getting better and better. You mentioned their two losses on the road at Miami and at Texas to two pretty good football teams. Yeah. Looking to be 7-2 and two and take control of the Big 12 North. And they are taking control of it right now. Lawrence Vickers into the secondary. <laughs> You're not quite that fast, Lawrence. But you're awfully good, Lawrence. You can't go all the way around the end. Got 11 more. <laughs> But don't you love it when the big man feels like he's oh, got yeah. that burst? <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's gonna to take this one inside. See a nice big gaping hole. Now watch his eyes get big as he takes the right cut to the outside. And he looked to the sideline or looked to his fellow blockers and pointed at his helmet as if to say, I know it went the wrong way. <laughs> That's what he's getting told on the sideline, but he's got a big smile and he's had a big game. We played three in Boulder, 31 to 12, Colorado in front. Our presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC station. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Life offers a simple formula for long-term success. Protect what really matters. Grow it with care. That's our approach to planning for your future at Prudential Retirement. For decades, we've used our strength to help people and organizations plan for retirement with intelligent retirement solutions designed to both grow wealth and protect it. Growth and protection. The strong and steady approach to retirement at Prudential Financial. Three climate zones. How's he doing back there? Three rows of seats. So everyone can travel in comfort. He's fine. The all-new seven-passenger Jeep Commander. It's your world. Take command. Freddy was about to meet the woman of his dreams. Will this wild stud be tamed? You're condescending and egotistical. Now that he's realized his true feelings... We're perfect for each other. Is it too late? An all-new Freddy after an all-new George Lopez Wednesday only on ABC.
limited time. Come on down for a taste of Old Chicago. We're talking a special three-course menu of Old Chicago favorites for the deliciously low price of only $10.99. Your choice of starters, your choice of pizza, calzone, or lasagna, and your choice of desserts, all three for only $10.99. This tasty trifecta won't last long, so get down here today. Old Chicago. Eat. Drink. Be yourself. In the 50s this hour, get the latest forecast at 5. To today's home game, they could grab the Big 12 North by the horns if they could beat Missouri. And Lawrence Vickers and Mason Crosby and company have done just that through three quarters. Brad Smith was exceptional early. The defense made a play in the third quarter that looked like it would get him back close, but back came too much clap to his tight end, and it's 31 to 12 as we enter the fourth quarter. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler with our ABC crew in Boulder, Colorado. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, big day for Colorado. For Lawrence Vickers with three touchdowns rushing, Joel Klatt at one point was perfect in the ball game. Didn't seem like we were going to have any incompletions. Now he's marched his team down in the red zone again, a first down inside the 14-yard line of Missouri. Joel throws again. Vickers made the catch one-handed and backed out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Well, he almost scored on that touchdown at the end of the third quarter, and he says, now I can be a receiver. Faked like he was going to block the uh, man on the end of the line and then just slid out into the uh, flat. Vickers came in. He's, he catches the football. He's had 19 catches and two for touchdowns coming into the ballgame. He becomes the eighth different receiver Joel Klatt has utilized yeah, today for I the like, Colorado And I offense. like this kid, Vickers. I mean, I do too. they've got the other guys that can run faster, but Vickers can block on third down, pick up the linebackers, can catch and can run. Second down, Colorado. Here he comes running again. There he goes running again. Touchdown. Fourth of the day. That's why we both like him. Seven yard touchdown. In a, in a, in a very, very indiscreet way, Gary Barnett is sending a message to those other backs, Charles and to <laughs> Ellis with the injuries. Hey, you guys better get yourself healthy because we can win without you. We got this guy, we can play. Crosby's extra point is up and good. Coaches like to do that every now and then. Well, right now, I think Gary Barnett's team is sending a message to the rest of the Big 12 North. It's ours to have and to hold again this year. One car was ranked most appealing entry midsize by J.D. Power and Associates and earned Strategic Vision's Total Quality Award. And it wasn't Toyota or Honda. It was the Pontiac G6 sedan, designed to be one of the best cars in the world. And now, we've created another. The new 240 horsepower G6 Coupe. Until November 14th, G6 starts at 16490 with this special introductory offer. Pontiac, designed for action. At last, bring home the year's biggest movie on DVD, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, packed with over six hours of bonus features, including six deleted scenes and an all-new documentary. Buy Star Wars Episode 3 on DVD today. No, I gotta tell you, since I've been hurt and missing work, you've been a big help to this family. Ah. No, really. The cash we get from Athlac helps us maintain the house, put food on the table. And my Jenny continues with her piano lessons. Yep, this family's doing just fine. <laughs> and it's all thanks to... <laughs> Aflac. Ask about it at work. This month, I will rack up a massive cell phone bill talking about absolutely nothing. When my parents open next month's cell phone bill, they will cry. My calls will be monitored like a felon's. 
My dad's patience with my cell phone bill will run out at a socially crippling time. Don't get schooled in wireless. Get GoPhone. Pay as you go with cash or pick your plan with debit or credit. GoPhone comes with everything but a surprise bill. I will be grounded several times this year, but not because of my GoPhone. Only from Singular, raising the bar. I love Friday nights with my best friends. We have one rule. Everyone orders something different. Now at Olive Garden, new four cheese tortellini. Sautéed in a sauce of four Italian cheeses with large tender shrimp. At Olive Garden. Hit me! The American Music Awards, live Tuesday, November 22nd, only on ABC. Let's take a look at our IBM Star Watch. I think that guy that you just saw without his helmet on could have something to do with this. On the day, Lawrence Vickers, 18 carries, 85 yards, and a career high four touchdowns on the day. And he's uh, he's, he's normally he's normally the fullback, the blocking back, the guy that uh, is doing all the the dirty work for those little tailbacks behind him. Kick is too deep to be returned again. And Missouri will start at the 20 yard line and Brad Smith coming back out on the field. So having been shaken up, giving way to Chase Daniel who threw an interception that ended up being more Colorado points and Brad's coming back out. There's the numbers on the day. The rushing way down and as I mentioned yeah. the games they've lost is when he's been held in check on the ground. He came in as a Big 12's leading rusher as a quarterback and today became the all time rushing quarterback in NCAA history passing Antoine Randall L early in the ball game. James Gary made the stop on Marcus Woods. The thing I've been impressed with is this defense for Colorado. They have not given up a touchdown since the second possession of the game. You mentioned their fourth in the country against the rush. And they've proven that again today. Smith to throw, had a man open and just didn't get it to him. Ekwu Ekwu was wide open and Brad was hurrying in the pocket there trying to find a spot to throw it and threw it in the dirt. Guys, Tyler Llewellyn, 79, is coming off the field. One of the issues when you have an offense that does not huddle is when you get a quick injury and you're lining up for another play, as they did before, they could not substitute for him. Take the time of the no huddle. Smith looks to the sideline as those coaches all signal something, and he picks up from one of them what the play will be. Here comes a blitz over the middle, completes it this time, and that's Chase Kaufman, the tight end, and he's going to be, I think, about a half yard shy. Maybe it's closer than that to the first down. But he still needs about the length of the football, it appears. Looks like they're going down. They're going for it. Now they're hurrying up. Yeah. They want to snap this, I would think, before Colorado gets set. Colorado does settle in, though. This will probably be Brad Smith all the way. Now he comes up under center. See if he sneaks it. And did he get enough? Looks like it. He crossed the 30. That's close, all he had yeah. to do. If he's across the 30, he made it. We haven't seen him under center many times, have we? The yellow jackets down there on the sideline. They're all waving out at uh, Brad. Those four guys, they've already signaled their plays. Now, here's the option. He'll keep it this time and pay the price. Only got about two yards and then got hammered by Marcus Burton. So that's the whole system. We talked about it earlier. He brings the lineup without a huddle. Yep. One of these guys is live and three of them are dummies. <laughs> Intelligent dummies. Yeah. yeah. Decoys, we should say. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> Smith again delivers low, but that one scooped up by Martin Rucker. Pickup of about five. Colorado, they win this. They would have a two-game edge on everybody else in the Big 12 North with a schedule remaining that has them at Iowa State and then Nebraska on yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. Iowa State, I would think, would be, because Iowa State would be the closest one to them. Right. Iowa State again won today, if you missed it. Sean Coffey complete and a first down run out to the 45-yard line. If Iowa State would beat Colorado uh, next week at Iowa State, that would mean that uh, Colorado would have to beat Nebraska 
at home here to uh, win the championship. And that is the Friday of Thanksgiving weekend. On ABC. Down the middle, wide open man is his tight end again, Rucker. Martin Rucker's had a nice day for the Tigers' pickup of 13 as he gets his seventh catch of the afternoon. He's a good looking tight end. Yep. He is the brother of the um, Carolina Panther. Carolina Panther defensive end. Mike Rucker. He was a heck of a player in his own right, speaking of Nebraska. A lot of east west. There he got it going north south. Jimmy Jackson had to break about three tackles just to get to the corner where he turned it for two yards. Hey, Second down to eight. Well, Bob Brown, when you showed those coaches on the sideline signaling, I would point out one thing about that change from the first half to the second half. They went from t-shirts to jackets. <laughs> Good move. And so did I. <laughs> Smith, delayed blitz coming. Missouri picks it up well. And the pass is incomplete. Intended on the near sideline for Marcus Woods. It's kind of like uh, having uh, quadruplets. Uh, <laughs> if one of them is cold and the other one's hot, you got to who's going to who controls that? Group? That's right. Hey, I want to put on a jacket. Now, I'm kind of hot. I don't want to put on a jacket. One <laughs> like, actually went insulated there. <laughs> one's got a white hat on. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Well, one's got a black hat on too. Yeah. It's just a good guy. That's all. Third down and eights. Smith, plenty of time, going to go deep. Man out there in the corner, incomplete. Gerald Humphrey was the intended receiver. Double covered back there, and the ball was out of bounds anyway. So it's going to bring up fourth down, but I would assume Missouri is just going to keep right on going here, even though it's going to be a fourth down and eight coming up. You know, they've gone for fourth down more than anybody. I've, I've, they've gone for it 15 times in the first eight games. They've had a lot. And go for on fourth down. And they've been successful nine times. They've got to get all the way to the 32 yard line here. Fourth down and eight. Crowd getting noisy again. Smith almost intercepted by Burrow. Would have been his second of the day. Sean Coffey, the intended receiver. And Colorado takes over on downs. 11 minutes 33 seconds remaining in the ball game. Colorado right now in command. They'll have the ball offensively with a 38-12 lead when we come back. Sport is sport. A foul's a foul. And a bat's a bat, even if it's flat. Ten feet on the west side is ten feet on the east side. Football is football. Unless it's football. Now, win's a win, a loss is a loss. But no matter what, you better come with it. Because it's 90 feet to first, no matter where home is. It's the final days of Pontiac's new release party. Your chance to experience the most new models in our history. Get to your dealer by November 14th for a limited time new release bonus on the purchase or lease of a new G6 Coupe and award-winning G6 sedan. The Pontiac G6 starts at 16490 Pontiac's new release bonus ends November 14th. Don't be late. Pontiac, designed for action. People have been waiting for this game for a long time. In fact, the fans are already out in force. The marching band is here as well. Coming up on the camera. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. Hummer, check out the new H3. Hummer, like nothing else. Verizon Wireless, there's only one reason to choose a wireless company. It's the network. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. I don't know if she really means it, but Mason's actually standing there and he hit a 56-yard field goal earlier. 
He either knows her or she wants to know him. One or two. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not going to get involved with that. We didn't do that back when we were playing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with a 38 to 12 lead, maybe you get a chance to run over to the stands. Flags are down. Marcus King covering Stefan Robinson out there. We got to tell him. Crosby, Mason Crosby is not like your normal kicker. No, he's not. I mean, he is, you shake hands with him, and it's like a shaking hands with a linebacker. <laughs> yeah, but guys, we, we got to tell the story. I, we asked him about some great moments as we look at the uh, the official's call here. And he, what did he say was one of his best moments? Beating his dad in golf in for the, the golf first time. Course, yeah. That's yeah. right. He said yeah. he beat him on the golf course for the first time this year, and then his dad hasn't beaten him since. His dad normally comes to the games, but he's got a little brother who's, uh, on the football team and he's got games being played so his dad's not here watching at home so dad uh you got to take a few strokes off your game yep jim if you're watching back there jim and his daddy was a fullback at utep back in the 70s and your son loved the fact that he finally beat you out on the golf course big smile about that one byron ellis there he's inside the 40. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if Dad knows anything about this, but uh, <laughs> look at the look on his face over there, on the left side of the screen. <laughs> Kick, kickers normally don't get that kind of. No, oh, I know. I said to him yesterday, I never thought I'd ask this question to a kicker, but is there any possibility, being a true junior, that you would not return to Colorado and go to the National Football League? And he said, my mom would kill me if yeah. I didn't graduate. Uh -huh. So I think that was the answer. Yeah. Second down and three for the Buffaloes, leading 38 to 12 here with 10 minutes and change remaining. There's an opening and a nice run by Byron Ellis. Well, maybe Bob was right. Maybe that whole uh -huh. Vickers thing sent a message. Uh -huh. That's the best Byron Ellis has looked at it. His ankle's not hurting as bad as it was before <laughs> Vickers didn't play today. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Lawrence says, let me back in. Give him a breather. I want to get 100 yards. Time permitting. Reminder to stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. John Craig and Aaron will have scores and highlights from around the country. We understand Notre Dame was victorious today over Tennessee, so they're what, six and two? Yep. They have to finish nine and two and in the top 12 in the country to be in the BCS. Get an automatic action. Hit, yeah. Yep, to get an automatic hit. We'll draw play. Ellis stops, goes, try to stiff arm, and got dropped for a two yard loss by Jason Simpson. Talk about Notre Dame now. You know, it's nice to have Penn State back. It's nice to have UCLA and Alabama back. It's nice to see Notre Dame back. The old powers. Hey, you know. what are they? They've only lost two ball games, and they've lost to Texas, and they've lost to USC. Yep. Number one and number two. Yep. Don't you think they should be ranked a little higher than they ranked? I mean, I would. I mean, I mean who, who's going to beat them? You think if they played uh, the six, seven, and eight teams, you think if they played Miami that uh, would be interesting. You may see that in a, down the road somewhere. Well, there's a collision. Nice hit by Dedrick Harrington. Loss of five. You, know, you talk about the teams that early in the season everybody expected to be great. And when you look at the Preseason top 12. There's how it looked. Now those two on the top, they're they're pretty familiar and they're about in the same spot. But let's slide that baby to the left a little bit. And now let's bring in the current BCS top 12. And Greece, you do the honors. One. The Tennessee's there no longer. Uh, Michigan's out of there. They're not in the top uh, 10. No, Oklahoma's not. Oklahoma's long gone. Long gone. Florida, forget it. They lost a few. Iowa lost again today. Yeah. And Louisville scratch them. Now the big surprise is there's two of them right there, Alabama and UC. CLA. And then Penn State. How about seven. Penn State being up to number seven? Yep. Quite a change from the beginning to the spot we're in right now. Colorado has taken a timeout. And eight minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the ball game. They're down to one. And while we've got a moment, and the fans are celebrating in Boulder. Let's check in and see what's going on with John in New York. Brad the Pontiac game changing performance update. Northwestern trailed by a couple of touchdowns late. They score and then recover this onside kick. Reggie McPherson can't advance it, so they need to mount a long drive, and they do. Brett Bazinet with a touchdown pass with 42 seconds left, and Northwestern comes back to win at 28 27. Nominate your Pontiac game changing performance at ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. Yeah.
Going into the season in the Big Ten, the preseason choice to be the quarterback of the year was Drew Tate at Iowa. Now pick your <laughs> Big Ten, all Big Ten quarterback. Different look. You got Matt Hay, Hay, you got Michael Robinson, Robinson. you got Stanton, Stanton. Michigan State. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody in the truck said something about Indiana's quarterback. <laughs> Might have been our illustrious producer. Who's your grad, Bruce Clark? Got a big game coming up with Purdue in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, that's for the, the old Oak and Buck. Old Oak and Buck. Old Oak and Buck. Flat going to throw a screen pass to Ellis, being chased and spinning away and trying to get a little extra yardage. Jason Simpson, really the guy that finally got him off his feet, and the guy that was chasing him is down. I don't know if that's Jamar Smith or not. He's the one that scored the defensive lineman that scored earlier on the fumble return when he took it on one hop. And he was desperately trying to chase down the quarterback, and I think he's the guy that's still down. And it is. It's Jamar. Yeah, he's a, he, just, uh, he just came to Missouri this year. He's a junior college transfer. He's out of Miami and uh, really was hustling on the play and dove and may have hurt his shoulder when he dove. Played Juco ball at Northeast Oklahoma A&M. He was really giving chase here, and he had what looked like a pretty good bead on... The running back, and then looks like he just fell on his right shoulder as he was trying to trip him up. There he got a piece of him, and then kind of got jammed into the turf there, the right shoulder. He's coming off, and appears to be okay. I may have just got the wind knocked out. Yeah, of him. could be. Bob said, "Out of Miami." Well, you know there was nothing really structurally wrong with him the way he was flopping around there on the uh, <laughs> on the field. Yeah. That's kind of sounds kind of callous, I know, folks. Yeah. But when when you're playing football and you see a guy on the field and he goes down, if he's flopping around like that, you know it's not a knee or usually not anything really bad. Could have been a cut or something like that. Mason Crosby in now for a 43-yard field goal attempt. It's one for two today. And he's got this one right down the middle. <laughs> Well, she gets to be a bigger fan as the game goes along. 41 to 12. Colorado in front, 8 and 16 to play. has a unique way of seeing the world. That's why Pacific Life offers portfolio optimization for its variable products. A unique service that helps you and your financial professional identify an investment strategy that's right for you. And Pacific Life offers a full palette of investment choices to help you achieve your vision of your future. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Good news, I got us on the family share plan. Each of you gets a Verizon wireless phone, so whenever you go out, you'll have the network. When you guys go to the mall, we'll have the network. And when you go, uh, wherever it is that you go. I'll have the network. There's only one family share plan that also has the nation's most reliable wireless network. Add up to three lines for just $9.99 each. Verizon Wireless, it's the network. Wednesday. So yeah. An all new lost everyone will be talking about. Do you see him? What the hell is that? One of these survivors will be lost forever. Oh god. An all new lost Wednesday 9 8 Central only on ABC. Back in Boulder, Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan. I'm more impressed with Colorado now, having seen them in person and seeing that they're not only doing it on the ground. Joel Klatt's been impressive. Their defense has been good. Yeah, and they've, they've always been, special teams have been good, and their passing game has been good. What's been lacking is their run game and, and all the stuff stopping themselves, all the penalties. Right, and they haven't had those today. They They've haven't. averaged over 10 penalties a ball game. Now the big question is, you can be as happy as you want as a Buffalo fan. If you make it to Houston, <laughs> yeah. Are you good enough a second yeah. time around to beat Texas? Yeah. Well, the good news is 
you get a chance to find out. The first like time you played them was at Austin. That's right. In their backyard. So, and they're getting better each week. Uh, Colorado is improving, so uh, we'll see. Coming up tomorrow, don't forget uh, live final round action of the Tour Championship down at East Lake in Atlanta, presented by Coca-Cola. Coverage starts at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Then it'll move over to ABC at 1 o'clock. Swanee was down there earlier this week to get them all lined up for the uh, Pro-Am. And the leaderboard looks like this, Bryant. Man, as he chipped in from the sand, I believe, as we went with that update with John. Can I see that leaderboard that again? That was kind I didn't of get a, a quick leaderboard. Talk about it. Yeah, that, that was more like a skateboard. Uh, Retief Goosen will be in that last group with him. And Tigers within striking range. Scott Verplank, 8 under. Davis Love the third at six under. So uh, can Bryant keep playing that well? I don't know. That's I kept waiting for him to do something wrong, and he just keeps playing great. Yeah. When he shot the 62, they said he showed that he can play with the big boys because I think he was in the Q school about four times. <laughs> he says, "Well, let me see if I can shoot three more of those, and then I'll agree with you." Yeah, exactly. Hey, he's coming close to it. Yeah. Wow, that shot out of the trap uh, there late today was pretty impressive. Tiger, of course, when he's playing on the last day and wearing a red shirt, you never be, uh, yeah. you always have to be looking over your shoulder. Yeah, if he's on the leaderboard and last day, I'm watching. <laughs> Missouri now, not only with the no huddle, but the hurry up and let's go no huddle. Chase Daniel in at quarterback. Hands in! Chase with a throw complete to Kaufman. There's, there's freshman to freshman. That'll be a battery for a long time oh, yeah. in Missouri in years to come. Bob, who's hot and who's not this week? Who's hot? Let's take a look. Is it Blazes in there? Well, the city of L.A. is hot right here. Yeah, you got that right. You got them both hot. Penn State is rolling. Fresno State, now they play, and they play USC in a little while. Virginia Tech plays tonight, of course, on ESPN against Miami. A huge game in the ACC. Sean Coffey with the catch. Teddy Bruschi makes the lists. Teddy Bruschi's hot. West Virginia, TCU, Alabama stays hot. Steve Spurrier. Vince Young pretty hot again today, 62 to nothing over Baylor. Alabama was winning the last time we saw 17 to nothing. 298 yards today for Vince Young. We'll see him next week against Kansas. And Kansas, uh, actually, they can make the at least lukewarm to medium hot thing with the last two wins in Big 12 play. They, uh, who's win. not who's not hot? Who's not hot? This is never not fun. No, this is this is. Uh, <laughs> I just hand this off to you because I, I don't want to be part of this. Uh, well, it's yeah. teams that are struggling a little bit. You know, now, now wait a minute. I put my own alma mater on there. Yeah, that, and they won, and they today. won today. Yeah. Well, that's okay. See Illinois and Washington and take another look at that. I like the one you got on the bottom. I'm definitely with you there. <laughs> Gee whiz. He wouldn't fit in in our crew. We get kind of a teamwork group here going, and he wouldn't fit in. Like I said before, whenever we do the who's hot and not list, everybody comes into the truck. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's throwing one out there. We got about 25 candidates for hot and not. Third down. Daniel scrambles. Throw short and got it complete. Nice job. He moves well in and out of that pocket. Yeah, and I like the gamesmanship and the poise of this young guy. For the night you mentioned, for the next few years, it's going to be uh, Chase Daniel that's going to be quarterbacking this Missouri team. You know, he reminds me a little bit of, and he's still a young guy as well, Drew Tate. I was just going to say, I knew, I, I knew who you were going to come the up Same with. kind of movement in yeah. the pocket. Jimmy Jackson. Akarika Dawn, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Time permitting. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. John Craig and Aaron will have scores and highlights from around the country. Here we're down to the final six minutes. Colorado 41 to 12, and they will be getting a little payback to Missouri, who beat them last year. Almost intercepted. A poor throw there by the freshman. Yep. Don had his hands on it. This is good. This is good work for him, though. This uh, this will pay dividends next year yep. when he's playing. Third down at 10 upcoming. <laughs> Missouri. Uh, here's a look at uh, Gary Barnett. This will be well, this will be the fourth time they've won the 
Big 12 North. Yep, in the last five years. In the last five years, four of the last five. That's pretty impressive. There was an interesting article in the local paper today. It said a game like this, more than just trying to be in the Big 12 championship game again, but in the national kind of conscious of uh, the Bill McCartney area. You just saw Patrick McManus just showed us the shot of 1990 championship banner. They, they want to get back to that level, and that's still one more step up they have to take, and they look like they're getting back closer to that than they were a year ago. Uh, last year, they won the Big 12 North, but they got hammered by Oklahoma in the game we saw. And we asked Gary yesterday, what's different about this team? He said, we're more mature. I, we're a year older. We're a year deeper. We got a quarterback that has really taken to coaching this year and hasn't made the mistakes he made a year ago. Our defense is better. I mean, they're a better football team than they were when we saw them a year ago. Well, I think one thing they've got to get straightened out is uh, his contract. That's for sure. Uh, that's an issue, when, obviously, in recruiting. Uh, we touched on it with Glenn Mason a little bit when we did Minnesota and Ohio State a week or so ago. But uh, this situation and, of course, all the kind of scandal that's been around Boulder of a couple of years ago, and all of that has sort of dissipated now. They lost a few players out of that. But with that, of course, came the job security for Coach Barnett, and he was kind of in limbo and kind of in a, in a suspension mode through a spring camp two years ago. And now the team is back. Uh, the crowds are starting to come back. That was even an issue as far as ticket sales and all of that. And now he's down to one year left on his contract. There hasn't been an extension given out yet. And, of course, when you're recruiting and you're trying to do high high power recruiting now, other schools use that against you exactly. and they tell kids well what if he's not there so yeah. are you going to go there and Swanee I know you had a chance to talk to the athletic director about the very thing yesterday and he talked about it it's a process I mean they're they're averaging 3,000 more per game here uh, and there's a process they have to go through right now at the University of Colorado they have an interim president an interim chancellor and an interim provost They've got nine members of the Board of Regents that really runs the program. So there's a process. You don't want to be hired by a university president who's not going to be here uh, and because there's all kinds of things and issues there. But uh, I've been led to believe that they're looking at a contract extension for Coach Barnett. Uh, they want him here. Uh, they believe that he is good for the program. He is doing all the right things. He's giving the right response. And they intend to make sure that he's here for several more years. Daniel in the pocket, scrambling out. Not going to get to the first down marker, and then he gets buried at the 20-yard line. Gary Barnett didn't seem that concerned that the contract situation wouldn't be straightened out and thought that hopefully it would be done in a matter of weeks. So we hope they get all that straightened out as time goes by. We're down to 423 time-wise here in Boulder. taste and you get it excuse me are you still relying on your broker for investment ideas got an alternative I'm listening are you kidding who's got time to do it yourself I invest for myself at TD Waterhouse they make it easy to come up with my own investment ideas with tools like their stock screeners TD Waterhouse helps you find investment ideas in the time it takes to make a cup of coffee you can do this switch to TD Waterhouse the alternative to higher priced brokers Okay, folks. Why not make a smaller one? Pacific Life game summary. Colorado led 24 to 6 at halftime. 
Missouri came out. The closest they got was on this fumble return by Jamar Smith of 12 yards, made it 24 to 12. Back came Joel Klatt in the back to Sipnuski is tight end 31 to 12. That was how the third quarter ended. Then Lawrence Vickers added his fourth touchdown rushing on the day. Mason Crosby's tacked down a field goal. It's 41 to 12 with four minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the ball game. We're going to see James Cox, the backup quarterback for Colorado, to get a little time now with Joel Klatt's day not only done, but done very impressively. Lamar Jackson in the Colorado backfield. Cox throws out wide. <laughs> As they've been doing all day to Stephon Rob, uh, Robinson. And Stephon comes in with no catches. And he's going to end up with about five today. Yeah. Or, or more, maybe. Well, he's got single coverage out there. He is one of the guys Gary Barnett talked about, as well as uh, Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator. We want to get him to our big play guys, and Robinson is one of them. So we're under four minutes. James Cox, there's his numbers on the year, his sixth appearance of the season. He is a junior. Out of California, 6'3, 210. Joel Klatt finished the day, by the way, 23 out of 31, 253 yards and one touchdown. But I think more importantly, talk about getting your teammates involved. It's two to nine different receivers today. And no interceptions in his last 122 attempts. So Joel Klatt had an exceptional outing today. Brad Smith on the other side for Missouri. Both of them had a string going where we hadn't had a drop pass through a whole quarter. Almost got to halftime without any incompletions. And I think at halftime the uh, the percentages were off the charts for both these guys. You know, you mentioned you, you threw the ball to nine different receivers. You know, a quarterback when the play is called, there is like three or four chances, and three or four opportunities are receivers that could catch the ball right. on most routes. Now sometimes it's it's going to go to one guy or the other guy, but most of the time it's going to go to four or five different guys. So they just add up. You know, the quarterback says, "Hey, you threw it to nine guys. Yep. Nine guys? Did I really? <laughs> I was just throwing to whoever was open." That's right. That's probably what he'll say when he finds out in the locker room that that has happened. But I like the conversation we had with Joel. He said what he liked about playing quarterback was the fact he could look off a receiver, he could fake people out, he could manipulate the secondary, yep. all of those things, you know, the different mindsets you have to have when you get down into the red zone. That's the kind of thinking quarterback you love to have. When I mentioned earlier about the fact that he had aspirations to play at the next level, of course, you know, pretty much everybody does or thinks they can. And I said to him, you know, you're not the biggest guy in the world, but you got a heck of an arm. You're smart. You can move around well. And I said, who thought Cody Pickett would be starting for the 49ers this weekend? That's that right. got a chuckle out of it. <laughs> True. Cody Pickett was uh, the starting quarterback for the University of Washington, and then he was like the fourth string quarterback for San Francisco right. until a few guys got hurt, and there he was. They were down to two minutes, and Colorado about to go to seven and two, and they will be five and zero oh at home so far this year. Here's Jackson again, bouncing off, cuts to the outside, picks up positive yardage before Brian Smith brings him down, and Derek Ming, who's had a good game today, hurt his hand or wrist as he goes off to the sideline. Some of the Storylines of the day in college football this afternoon. Vince Young, 298 passing yards, 62 to nothing at Baylor. Texas rolls. Kansas beats Nebraska for the first time in forever, 40 to 15. Florida State is losing to North Carolina State, 20 to 13. We understand we just got an update. And Northwestern a winner over Iowa 21 unanswered points. John showed us on that one update for the victory over Iowa 36 straight games. That's something else. Nebraska had beaten Kansas. That is really something. What a big win for Mangino, Mangino and, and his company. staff. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Wouldn't want to be necessarily Bill Callahan today, but then he's had a rough week all the way around. That's true. <laughs> Fourth down coming up for. Well, you know, Colorado. this is the uh, tenth week of the season, partner. We got we got five more to go. Yeah. Everything is shaping uh, shaping out. Just waiting. Everybody just uh, BCS is going to work out all right. You know, it's not perfect. But uh, we got five more weeks to go and see how it runs its course. Well, a lot will be maybe shaking out tonight in Blacksburg. You never know what could happen there. And of course, UCLA and USC have to play each other. First week of December. 
the championship games, ACC, SEC, that could determine some things, even if Alabama makes it to Atlanta to that game undefeated. So we're down to unbeaten teams at this stage in the season. You know, when you get to this point and you start looking back and you think about years past, yeah. the undefeated teams at this 10-week mark, this right. is how it looked. This is how they looked at, at the... 10 weeks into the season. And then throw it in one of those dice jars and just whip it out there and go, how many of them finished that way? Uh-huh. End of the See? season. Yep. It works out pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. Most of the time it has worked out. Not so much last year, but we'll just, you know, it's, it's better than the old system. It's better than the one we used to have. It's not perfect, but... The folks down in Auburn have the biggest gripe, maybe, Coach Tuberville and the, the War Eagles, because they out of the party last year. And two years ago, USC got left out uh, of the game down in, uh, it was Oklahoma and LSU. Yep. And I subscribed to the Bob Stoops uh, comments when uh, he was playing LSU. He said, just tell me what the rules are. Don't change them on me. At the end of the year, if we live by the rules, yep. you just, that's, that's, you gotta play. Out that's, that's how it. you play them. It's We're down to the final eight seconds. We want to say hi to one of our teammates who isn't here. Michelle Warble, big part of our crew. Uh, had a little bit of surgery this week. Michelle, we love you. We miss you. You don't have to come back to work real fast, but we need you back. So I hope you're feeling better. That's going to do it, but flags flying. You don't want to see a game end like this because this is way over, guys. And it's the 70th time you've gotten together. You don't have to finish the 70th this way. Final score, 41 to 12. Colorado wins it. Today's Chevrolet players of the game for Colorado, Lawrence Vickers. He was our man from the get-go. 85 yards and a career-high four touchdowns rushing. Martin Rucker, career-high nine catches for 88 yards for the Missouri Tigers. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. So, an impressive win for Colorado. Now they're in the driver's seat to win the Big 12 North for another year with a 41-12 victory in front of the hometown folks today. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Be sure to join us tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern Time. The Eagles take on the Redskins on ESPN. And then 9 o'clock Monday night, the Colts battle the Patriots. Here in Colorado on a sunny, cool day, it was Colorado over Missouri, 41 to 12. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan and our entire ABC crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Boulder. 41-12, the final score. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. The